is the R&B Money Podcast, mm -hmm. the authority mm -hmm. on all things R&B. Yeah, I'm smiling. Oh, you know, today's a good day. We get to speak with a man of the cloth, uh, <laughs> a man of prestige, Yeah, uh, a man of many uh, curated gifts, a man mm. that knows his shit. For real, for real. It's been doing it for quite some time. Many moons. As a small niggling. <laughs> he was doing this shit on a high level. You <laughs> understand him, what I'm saying? Him high notes. Oh, hiding high notes. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Uh, no it's, tune. It's been happy days. What? Oh, huh? happy days. Oh, happy yeah. days. Huh? Fuck it, Ryan Cove is in the building. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. You did that. Yeah, yeah you man. Did that. You did that. Yeah, I'm blushing, but I'm just the guys here, man. The guys here. I'm blushing right now. Um, <laughs> heavily requested. Heavily, heavily requested, bro. Yeah, I don't know if man. you know this. Yeah. What? Oh, the I streets wanted it. to see you on here. I appreciate it. Thank you so we are, much. We are, we are still excited. dancing. In the streets and celebrating yeah. to your tunes. Appreciate that. Oh, man. yeah, for sure. Appreciate that, man. I don't know how that feels to you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how you know. Humbling. Very, very humbling. Very surreal. I'll be just in my own little world and then I won't be on the gram for a couple of days, whatever, and then I'll check the gram randomly and it'll be, nigga, you know, you viral right now? Be some yeah. whole. Something challenge, superstar challenge, old happy day challenge. You know, somebody be talking about city high. I'm like, God dang, I've been in the game 30 years. Yeah. So it's it's wow. It's very it's an honor to be like, wow. How old are you? Still? I'm 46. You 46. Yeah. I'm I'll be 47 this year. You a year older? I'm a year older. Than yeah, you. I'll be 47 this year. What day? When? when uh, November 26th. November 26th. Okay. Yeah, Thanksgiving, baby. Sad, yeah. Sad you, nation. You was almost a Capricorn. Was almost, almost. Almost. The Lord almost. I ain't want that. Saw fit. To, I ain't want that. I ain't want that. Saw fit to put you. <laughs> As put if you, he had a choice. Put yeah, you in yeah, the right yeah, place. I want that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the word says, you know, before I formed you. In your mother's womb, he knew me. So we he had a conversation, you. and he I knew, said, "Listen, you. now don't don't send me into that Capricorn energy." <laughs> he knew you. He knew you. He was like, "Yeah." Make they, them thankful for me. He was like, "They full over there in Capricorn." They full. Full. Let me, let me full. Full. Let me full. Let me full. Full. And I mean, full. I come full. down the We are not fools. Yeah. Y'all are fools. We are not. <laughs> oh my God. Tyrese and Art Kelly excluded. We are fine. We are good people. <laughs> Just, <laughs> We are great. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you, but you have to have like. I was reading stuff like on this on this humble word. I was reading stuff on it, just you know, just going down the rabbit hole and mm. the word humble and humility, humility, and all these things. But at times, you have to feel like, or I would like for you to feel like, yeah, I did that. Mm. I, I, yeah, I did. I mean, not even I did. Yeah. I, 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 I do that. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it, and it's okay yeah, to, yeah, feel like that because yeah. when I hear it and I see you, I tell you, yeah, you, you do that. Yeah. <laughs> you did that. You when do you know? When do you know when to like? Obviously, you want to be humble. You was raised to like, you know, be humble. Da da da. da. But then it, it's like, and we in a business where it's like, if you don't talk your talk, it's almost like they forget it. Different. You can't, or, or you can't, someone else will take credit for it. Yeah, it's like, oh, you know wow. what I mean. Exactly. Or somebody maybe not as whatever as you. They talk and they talk heavy, and then that's getting them in all kind of doors. Like I've always, aunt, to be absolutely transparent, I have struggled with that. Like, when do you know? When do you? Well, and then when do you? You yes, know, I, had, I was having a conversation with a good friend, a good friend of mine, Big Jason, and he was like. You know, he was having a conversation with, you know, another one of his artist friends that he works with. And he's like, you know, and he, he was kind of relaying the same message to me. He's like, when when you guys take off or lay off or, you know, or are passive aggressive mm -hmm. or whatever in that kind of space, mm -hmm. you leave too much room mm -hmm. for for the lesser. Mm -hmm. 
to then become the standard mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or the louder voice. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I'm not mad at balance. You know what yeah. I mean? I believe that there's room for the people who are uberly gifted yeah. and the people who just have a little gift but got hustled. Yeah. yeah. I, I think there's room yeah. for all of that. Absolutely. But we fuck up the balance when the truly gifted also don't do yeah. the same yeah. hustling yeah. and talking. So if you got that shit, you need on. to speak on it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If you got that shit, you need to speak on it. Because honestly, people need to know where exactly to go to get it. Right. Yeah. This is where the fuck it is. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and this is how you know where it is. This is what I've done. We yeah. can dial this shit up. Yeah. Here's the charts. We don't have to we don't have to guess anymore. Yeah. The analytic is a real game. <clears throat> yeah. Here's the shit with my name on it. Mm-hmm. Call me back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or at least have somebody on your team that talk like that. And if maybe then you can you 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 just do the work and then you got your talker that go out. Somebody there gotta say yeah. something. That's a fact. <laughs> somebody yeah. gotta say something. That's a fact. Yeah. I mean, That's cause honestly, fact. do we do we know truly who Jay Z is if he doesn't have Dame Dash? Yelling mm. who he was early Sagittarius. on. Hmm. Hmm. Sagittarius. Hmm. Because that that sometimes you know you just that yeah. that, business, that business that business energy is real. Yeah. Because because Jay was a quiet or is a quiet guy mm-hmm. from what I've seen. I don't know him, but mm-hmm. he seems to be a really quiet guy. Mm-hmm. He needed someone boisterous mm-hmm. to say no 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 no. Can't nobody fuck with him. Can't nobody <laughs> fuck with so, him. Right. So that question now, my is, is real. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's a very real question. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nobody fucking with my man. Yeah, yeah, we starting that right now. here. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I've been in the studio with him. I wrote songs with him. Yeah. You ain't gonna out sing him. Yeah. You ain't gonna outwrite him. Talk about it. And he got you know what I mean? He got he, he's of the real cloth too. I mean his collar is hey. right now it's not pop. Yeah. It's, it's, pop. it's you know silky I mean? though. Yeah, it it's is silky. silky. It is silky. Nobody is fucking silky. with my yeah. man. <laughs> Why you make making merch with my man's name on it? Yo. Yo. And he not getting none of the merch. Right. Yeah. Fuck all that. Right. I'm trying to relive the Def Jam moment. They had that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Them his jackets. <laughs> oh, you got a whole tour without his name on it? Damn. Huh? Damn Fuck was that. Crazy. I need to talk to somebody higher up. Dame, was Dame is a legend, crazy. bro. He's a legend. He's a legend, bro. He's a le- Y'all had Dame on? Very necessary. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, okay. We need him. Oh, we yeah. gonna get him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. gonna get him. Yeah. We gonna set aside half a day. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gonna get one question off. We and, gonna set aside half a day. And that nigga talk. go. He gonna go for talk. a little hour. Um, right. Ryan Toby, since you're here, man, let's, let's, let's go back to the beginning. Um, yeah. You've, you've, you were a gifted kid, um, you, and you were able to tap in early mm-hmm. as a kid mm-hmm. into a very professional space. Mm-hmm. How did this? How did this start for you? Who knew? How did you? Yeah, back in uh, Jersey. Yeah, yeah like, what y'all call it? New Jerusalem, ain't that? It's like uh, New Jersey, man. That was a time. That was a time we we called it New Jerusalem. I think the Fuji's might have coined that phrase. Maybe. I mean, you you know you 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 are part of the huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, well, they they're from North Jersey. Jer- Jersey is split. It's North Jersey and South Jersey. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you kind of got like this little you know North Jersey niggas is New Yorkers pretty much. South Jersey niggas we grew up on Philly shit. Philly side. Ah, <clears throat> oh, gotcha. But we're only about an hour and a half apart. So mm-hmm. then you have that blending and that mixing, and that's what made where I'm from, Willingboro, New Jersey, same city, Mike. City's from, mm-hmm. uh, Ty Tribbett is from, oh, wow. uh, Wanye Morris graduated from my high school, uh, oh, sure, okay. Mike Zombie, who did Started from the Bottom, yeah. from, mm-hmm. yeah. he's from Willingboro, um, and the list goes on. Yeah. I really can't like, oh, rattle off nice list, right? Yeah. And you got I'm this just whole- just y'all city. Yeah. That's crazy. So, so something about that New York, Philly- mingling mixing whatever mm-hmm. in this you know what i mean this 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 water it just created like i don't know you got the hip hop the street element the grittiness in new york you got the soulfulness and the all of that from philly and then you just get talented ass motherfuckers you know yeah. what i mean and a lot of athletes and football players i can't even name all the different mm-hmm. like athletes that came out of my town but um so yeah Willingboro, new jersey it was um it was great growing up there in the in the like seventies and the eighties, cause um, cats you you were 
like I said, you had the rough element, <clears throat> like you could get your, you know, your block knocked off, but then it wasn't like you was dodging gangs to the point gotcha. where you couldn't focus on other yeah. things or be free enough to yeah. play music in church yeah, you had to go get find nice the bullshit. And, yeah right, you, right. but it was there it right. was definitely right. there but, you but it, it wasn't in. like yeah. it was suffocating yeah gotcha. you know what mm -hmm. i mean some kids really like are in a yeah. war zone mm -hmm. so it just was like the perfect balance now it's kind of is bad but <laughs> you know what i mean but back then it was like just the perfect balance so um the music aspect was it was like fire like real fire like my high school wasn't even a performing arts high school but you thought it was we was known for having like the baddest girls and like the dopest musicians and the greatest athletes like mm -hmm. so it was where city families from the city could move to like this suburbs and get like a good house and get a family like that you know mm. that that opportunity yeah. Yeah, yeah but now you got this city influence and this influx of like the the swagger and the vibe you know what i mean but kids was able to still like harness their gifts and work on work on their craft and stuff like that and like the music program in our high school was just like insane like our our we our black heritage choir that sang every uh, uh black history month you know what i mean the black it was it was insane yeah it was insane like Wanye is singing it. like you know this yeah. is like pre boy yeah. motherfuckers was leaving school and getting record deals right 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 it was real ty tribbett was like the band director yeah that's crazy. Real in guy. high school. That's real what high guy. school is it? Motherfucking yeah. Adam Blackstone. Yeah. What high school is it? You know what I mean? Willingboro High it's School. Willingboro High School. That's crazy. Adam Blackstone, who does the Super Bowl now, yeah, yeah. Yeah. was like yeah. <laughs> playing bass for the black, you know, the little heritage, you know what I mean, choir kids when I was in school. That was, it's so, it, that just shows you like just the caliber. The level. So, mm -hmm. so when you say who knew, all the, the teachers and the different people that was like, you know, taking care of us and grooming us and our mothers and fathers that would buy us instruments and mm -hmm. let us make little, you know, little makeshift studios in the garage. Cause you know, we had garages. So it was like a couple of cats had like studios in their garage. And it's like, what the fuck? Like you got studio that's equipment? Crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Like little four tracks and little, you know what I mean? A little reel to reels and like niggas was cooking at a young age. It was being cultivated. It was really being cultivated. Now, I don't know if it was, if anybody knew anything big was going to come from it, mm -hmm. but it was definitely something that we were allowed to do. So it was an aspiration very early on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, niggas had studio equipment. Yeah. That was like unheard of. No, that is unheard of. <laughs> I, I didn't know nobody. Yeah, the keyboard. Yeah. Yeah. The keyboard I make my little tracks on. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we was hoping a nigga had a video game, nigga. <laughs> it was like you got Nintendo, nigga. Yeah, you got a, you got a second Genesis, Genesis over there. <laughs> oh, he doing it, right? He doing it. Ain't nobody had no NPC, nigga. You know what that was? Shit. Yeah. So our parents knew. Uh, for me, uh, my mother, my mother could sing. Um, so she would say, you know, they'd call her up to sing solos in church and stuff on Sunday, and so. She saw that I had to gift early. Her brother was a pe uh, preacher. My uncle Leonard was a preacher. He could sing, mm -hmm. so I think I got it like from them too. You know, my my mom and my uncle. And so my mother started making me sing solos in church and stuff like that, which I hated. Um, I had extreme stage fright. Kind of still do. I mm -hmm. think that's why I like stay in the studio a lot and like fell back more so on the pen mm -hmm. versus like going super duper hard as an artist because I always had this stage fright. It was crazy. Like that, you know what I mean? Knowing when to like, when do you be big and mm -hmm. let a motherfucker have it? But then it's like, you know, sit down, little nigga, humble yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So you it was don't like think the church know? helped with that. Because that's usually usually when you no, see. I feel like the church is vicious, man. No, but that's what I'm saying because because it because it is it is you know take I mean? your time. They kill your you, dream you know real I mean? fast. Yeah, yeah. Call, it ain't on you. Yes. The anointing ain't, ain't on, on you. you. Like I was told. Like wait, what? Somebody no, told you? Wait a minute, no, bro. There's well, no that oil. was the bar, right? Yeah. That's how you got good too. Yeah. But you shaking the whole time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no oil on that yeah, little bar. Yeah. What was that? What was yeah. that? Are you moving in your flesh? You, and you're like seven. I don't even understand this vernacular you're talking about moving in my flesh I don't and even operating have, under it. Like, what are you talking I about? You haven't even grown my flesh. Like, yet. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I'm 10 years old. I, haven't I don't even, even dabbled even, into fleshly I'm, things. I just try not to get a whooping. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? 
<laughs> you're like asking flesh. me about like you're giving me like an existential crisis about like my soul and where my spirit is operating like lady back I thought up. I grew up in a dangerous <laughs> place man the church is way <laughs> more dangerous I ain't gonna lie they ran me out of that's why I got that's why I went into like secular music and I'm like fuck that gospel shit yeah. it's too much pressure it was pressure <laughs> I ain't gonna even hold you in my flesh what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Bro said he was seven. Yeah, it was, I was seven yeah, it was in a lot his of, flesh. I was confused. Nick. I was confused. So I hated let, it. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Is there a standout solo moment from maybe your mom mm -hmm. or your uncle that like you can pinpoint to this day that you were like that that moment like resonated so crazy with me that it made me like go home and start singing and practicing? Um let me see a couple moments because my <laughs> so like my uncle his aunt i mean his aunt his wife my auntie mm -hmm. they they preach it preach it they yeah. like you know the, the all night seven day revival yeah yeah oil i already Jesus. know oh my god you gotta it, it was a lot it mm -hmm. was a lot you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> i love them but it was a lot we're gonna pray it out of you as long as it takes <sighs> Everything will get prayed out as yeah. long as so it was a lot of that that heavy culture and so then it would be like you going you gonna preach so now I gotta preach it yeah you gonna preach you gonna stand up here and you gonna preach the word and like and it would be cool and fun to kind of do it in front of family a little bit as a little kid mm. but then they would like set up like I'm gonna preach on like during service and it's like wait wait whoa 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 wait a minute like i didn't i didn't sign up for that and then uh so those moments of having to preach something about the audience and then they like come on now come on like like you better kill it right right the energy it's, of like it's, you it's supposed better to be kill encouragement it. but it's like you better kill it right i, I get exactly and what that's when i learned very early on like what church was it was like oh this is a performance Yes. This is a performance. Yeah, yeah. And that actually made me, to, to your point of, want to go home and practice, but to not want to be good there. I was like, I'd rather go do it where Michael Jackson is doing it because mm. it just looked more fun. And he yeah. get to make videos and yeah. Prince get to do all kind of cool shit. Yeah. He got bad bitches on the back of a motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was like, I want to do it there. Yeah. So you I, I want to get good to so you, go do it so there. So you were in your flesh. I maybe <laughs> clearly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just seen him in a little preacher suit on a motorcycle with Apollonia on the back. Cause you know what? No, no, no. Let me, let me. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep it all the way Not here. No, here. listen. Let's stay on Prince for a second. Let's stay on Prince for a second. So imagine, right? This is like '84, Purple Rain '80, right? Yeah. I'm a little. I'm just a jig. Good time. A good we time. Come home from church where like. The pressure is on because it's pressure to like, you got to be holy and don't sin and the Lord is coming back and yeah, the devil's yeah. out to kill you. And it's just like a yeah. lot of that. Right. And that's cool. And you got to sing. Now sing and bring the house down. And he's just like, I thought I'm just supposed to be singing to the Lord. And it's like, no, you got to like move the crowd too. I'm like, wait a minute. Now imagine that. Then you come home from church and your neighbor, one of your best friends, this kid, his <laughs> name is Dario Molina. Shout out to Poochie. We called him Poochie. He was a little older. Prince fan galore. He had a big ass uh, boombox ghetto blaster back yeah. in the day with the double tape deck, right? And he blasted in Purple Rain out the window. His window was broke, so he used to put the radio in the window to prop up the window. And the music be blasting in the neighborhood. My, drove my father crazy. We coming home from church, and then I'm hearing Darling Nikki. <laughs> And like, oh, you know, Jesus. Computer Blue and oh, like man. Wendy, yes, Lisa, is the water warm yet? Yes, Lisa. And like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, early, no, 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 no. And I'm like, I'm a, I'm seven years old. Like, what the fuck is that? Who what is, it, why does what, it feel why like? Why does that right. feel And is the way? Lord speaking to me? His, or record like. Absolutely. <laughs> listen. Absolutely the Lord is speaking listen, to you. Listen, I'm asking Poochie like, Prince, that song Bambi. What is that about? Oh, it's about a lesbian. What the fuck? What is a lesbian? It's like right. a girl, you know, Bambi is much better to, you know, better to do it with a man. Bambi, she can't do it like I can. Like, I'm like, what? My mind was blown. Like, yeah, you know, so yeah, I yeah. I had those, you probably had the same two worlds. It's like, you, you, you got your foot in this, but then it's like, man, you got this whole other 
sexual nature shit boiling up inside of your little body and you don't know what the fuck to do with I it. I just la- I probably I lasted a lot longer than you. Yeah. Like I stayed. Yeah. I stayed holy until <laughs> Until a couple years out of high school, man, right, you already okay. talked about what you was doing in the church basement, man. No, no, I mean you would dabble. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? He's talking about I, I, I stayed. Stay, you you would stay dabble. Holy. The flesh is weak. <laughs> the flesh is weak. You're gonna have cravings, God. but I didn't. I didn't truly have the, you know, I didn't want to get out in the world yet. I didn't. Yeah. I, I didn't mm. have that desire. I, I didn't yet. either. But it was. I'm so. I'm speaking from a. From a sonic perspective, no, for a music sure, no. perspective, S- same thing. The music mm. just moved me different, yep. mm. and so it was like in the church world. It was well, as a child, I'm the way my brain was processing it was like, so in church, I have to try to like use this music of the Lord to make y'all feel something. Like, and if you ain't anointed, if you ain't getting the whole, ah, yeah. you know what I mean. And I was equating that to like, wait, why is I don't understand. How am I supposed to make y'all feel God? I didn't understand. I was a child. Yeah, for sure. But then when I would hear Prince and Michael Jackson and see the videos and see the whole spectacle of it all, even Tina Turner, what's love got to do? And I'm like, that music makes me emotional. Yeah. Made me cry. It made me, I felt it more. I just felt it more. Yeah. I don't know why. You call it flesh, call it whatever you want to call it, but that's what spoke to me. So it was like, that's that was what I want to do. calling. Yeah, like that's what I want to yeah. do. I don't want to do that yeah. for some reason. I don't. I just didn't connect to it as much. So I did it because I had to. Mm-hmm. And I and maybe yeah, that's where the gift came from. But R and B music, I don't know. That shit called that shit was like hypnotized from a very young age. And they look cool. The clothes were cool. The hair was cool. Niggas had perms and jerry curls and could do shit. Michael Jackson was magical. Nigga, the nigga, the ground magical. would light up when he it's would a, walk on the ground in Billie Jean, like. He was. I thought this nigga was magic. Yes. I thought all of those yeah. things. I just was so not allowed to be in it. That right. you know, I guess I wasn't either. But I would sneak and do it. Of it, I would just, I just stay. <laughs> you away. had what's it, Poochie and Poochie. You had Poochie. You had you had Poochie. Poochie. Also, <laughs> I had, I had, I had, I had no Poochie. You had no Poochie. I ain't had no Poochie. But also, uh, you with, with with you being a pr- probably in closer proximity to a place like New York yeah. and Philly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Philly, Philly for yeah. sure. Both. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like two major cities. Yeah. Like the vibrations were completely different. Yeah. Like I'm in, yeah. you know, I'm in a place where there's a church on every, like every yeah, corner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'm, and I'm in church all day, every day, and then I'm leading the services. Yeah. And then I'm doing like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a John P. Key clone. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fully immersed, and yeah, I'm yeah. thinking that you know R&B music is cool, but it ain't this. Wow. Them niggas, them niggas I know like, you were you were in your elitist yeah, yeah. space. Them niggas, wow. well, them niggas ain't like me. You know what I'm saying? Wow. When I first heard our kid, I was like, "Who's this flat goat guy? You guys are, you know, you guys like like this wow. is this is trash." You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, wow, this is horrible. You know, and for, for me, me I think minute. I think it's the it was the fact that church music and the experience came with hard discipline. Yeah, you're gonna do this. You better do this, mm-hmm. or you gonna get your ass whooped. Yeah, and you yeah. better be holy, and you better da 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 da. And you, so the music was equated to discipline. Yeah, it, mm. you so you feel me? Way Whereas more traumatic than, on the yeah, other yeah, side, yeah. it was freedom. Yeah, you be whoever you want to be. Or you thought it was freedom. Well, I thought. It was freedom. <laughs> yeah, cause, yeah, cause, yeah. Because at the top yeah. of the list of those guys, oh, they go just as hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't realize there was a Joe Jackson behind Michael Jackson until mm, I got right. older. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. And so then, you, then yeah. you watch Purple Rain and you realize, okay, uh, yeah. all right, yeah, this is what it really comes from. Right, exactly. I didn't realize that. And Andrew, Pressure like makes said, diamonds. Like, yeah. Pressure makes diamonds. I was a child, so you know, I wasn't processing everything right to even realize, oh, the discipline over here was actually good for me. And mm-hmm. you know, all of that I learned as yeah. I got older. But by that time it was too late. I was like, nah, I want to do out. everything these niggas is doing, whatever they doing. That's what I want to do. So what was your first pro moment? Pro moment. Pro moment where, <coughs> like, you've been tapping in. You've been there. Yeah. You've been in all these uh, garage studios. Yeah. Oh yeah. well, that you know what I'm saying. That started for about about fourteen years old because I I had my little my little very 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 short run of trying to have a thug life. That was very short. I realized very. Oh, you from the church to the thug too? Okay. I tried. I tried to start running the streets a little bit. 
a little bit. Wait, 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 give me some tried tried to bit. start running the streets a little bit, a little knucklehead crew, getting kicked out of school, back to back. Uh, started getting arrested back to back. Just a little dumb arrested shit. For what? What, what? Just dumb shit. I mean, the statute of limitations just is over, little, man. Stole, I know, I know. <laughs> just, just little homies, you know. Let's, you just, it's dumb shit, man. Like, little credit card. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like a little credit card. Ain't nothing like a little credit card. Little, little, you know. They call them scammers now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we, we been on dabble that. Dabble with that. A little bit of fighting. A little bit of like, you know, bigger homies. To me. You go, you know, I'm gonna go punch that nigga in the face. Let's get, you know, get yeah. shit rocking. There's a couple little crews running around. You trying to be down, you know. Yeah. A little shit like that. But that, that ain't last very long. I ain't like it. It's too many dudes. Not enough girls around. I'm like, nigga, I don't want to be fighting with dudes all the goddamn time. Like rolling around in the dirt. Great, great focus. Where the girls at? Where the girls at? <laughs> Once again, I'm like looking R&B at music. R&B what, nigga. I want to be where that. Where are the girls? <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. want to ask you when you when you when you buying your section at the club, <laughs> where are the you, girls? And you and you have 47 dudes, You're right? Where right. are the girls gonna? Where right. do the girls go? Right, exactly. Right. I right. know why I do it. Right. Yeah. And you gotta I knew, be a wild I knew, nigga I knew to go in there and not I let the girls sit I knew that very early too. That's the other part. When you go in the club, mm-hmm. you see those niggas, and it's like, come on, let let the young lady sit down, man. Yeah. Be, like you know what I mean? I get it. Your crew is deep. Don't nobody want no smoke with y'all. But ain't no midges over here, bro. Man. And I knew that very early. Yeah. I knew very, very, very early as a young, young, young man, like I knew what I liked. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Soft so, feet. Yes, yeah, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I High like heels. the smell of it. I, I yeah. knew very young, like Get into I the like smell. I like girls. <laughs> <laughs> so I just was trying and I was trying to figure out. So in church, it was like discipline. Then it's like you trying to run around with the homies, but it's like Man, y'all niggas stink, man. Like, what, what the yeah. fuck is that? <laughs> it's tight around it's, here. It's just tight. It's just tight. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. You know what I mean? I was exposed to some things, very, some very knowledgeable young girls and young ladies around my neighborhood when I was very young. And they just age. taught me some things. And I was like, what this I need? That? This is it. it. This yeah. is it. And as far as I was concerned... Prince was the nigga with the with the chicks and, and, and you know what I mean. I was like, you had to what? emulate that. I that's how to, I get them. That's how I get them. You know what I mean. So the the pro moment after the um, I got my shit together, met my first manager named Marvin, and um, how where 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 you? This is Marvin? in Willingboro, in in mm-hmm. Willingboro, New Jersey. Were you doing a gig? <clears throat> or was like- no 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 no. His I was actually um, in between schools. Got kicked out of one school. Had to go to another school. Uh, was going back and forth to court, uh, the little the, the little juvenile court I was going to. Oh, yeah, the you judge, really got caught in some shit. Yeah, yeah. The, the judge told my mom like, uh, if I see him in my courtroom again, I'm sending him away. That's it. And I remember my mom bawling her eyes out, crying, just like like why? Like you weren't raised like this. Like what are you doing? And just seeing my mother, I mean, like weep like that. It that was what made me be like, wait yeah. a minute, this shit ain't cool. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? So running around with the homies mean like I'm making my mom cry. Like that's just corny. That's not yeah. that's not, you know what I mean, fly to me. So I just decided at that point that I was gonna stop doing the dumb shit. And like I ain't wanna make my mama cry no more. So <clears throat> I cut all that out, started getting my my life together, and a little homie of mine, um, his name was Amir. I remember he he rode up on me one day on his bike and he was like, yo, man, he knew I could sing because people would hear me sing. I've been rapping and singing and beatboxing and breakdancing and shit since I was little. Even when my parents was like, you ain't listening to that music in my house. You know what I mean? I mm-hmm. still would do it, gravitated towards it. So he was just like, you should sing for my dad. My dad knows people in New York and they might, they might be able to get you in the music industry. And I wasn't even thinking about no music or nothing like that at that time. <clears throat> but, um, I ran into him and his dad at a barbershop and uh, sang for his dad. And I remember his dad. And his dad wasn't, at the time, he wasn't like no big manager or nothing. He was mm-hmm. just kind of like a, you know, ex-dope dealer, just hustle, some people hustle, hustle man type. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But he had the gift of gab. He was he was the dame. He was that voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he, yo, oh man, nigga, little nigga, a voice like that, you could make a million dollars. I'll never forget he told me that. And I was like. Yeah? Yeah. He was like, yeah. So it's like money, 
girls, Prince Michael Jackson shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. And so Marvin started, he came, he talked to my parents, um, told them he wanted to start working with me, whatever. And they like, whatever keep you, you know what I mean, out of trouble type of thing, um, you could do that. So I just would go to school, come home, do my little chores, whatever, and could go over Marvin's house and start rehearsing and working. So he had me doing little vocal lessons and singing Michael yeah. Jackson yeah. and like, you know what I mean? He just started putting me through the whole, you know, little artist bootcamp, development. Artist development. Mm -hmm. And he never had no artist before nothing. He just was a hungry, just a hungry young nigga. He was only about 25 mm -hmm. and I was like 14. Right. So um, shout out to Marvin too. And uh, then he started taking me to Philly, taking me to little talent contests and stuff. And I started winning. Like I was mm -hmm. winning like little first prize, little $250, yeah. little $500 yeah. prize. And then it, you know, and then I seen how the little girls are screaming. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? So it was like, this is it. Yeah. Then he started taking me to New York, taking me to the Apollo. Um, I would start performing at the Apollo, Showtime at the Apollo. I was like special guest performance. Like I would go on like after amateur night. They would do the amateur night and then they'd be like, mm -hmm. now we have a special guest. Okay. Yeah, you know I'm saying. So <laughs> you never did the show. I never did the TV show, no. Okay. But I would go, like, Amateur Night really was, like, every Wednesday mm -hmm. at the Apollo Theater. You know what I mean? And then they started doing the TV show, but I was, like, just going straight to the Apollo and just performing and at perform. the Apollo. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. and when, you know, and the little Jerry Curl lady, she would be there, you know what I mean? She in the front row, ah! Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And I'm up there, wee! And I, ah! Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like... Yeah, yeah, this is it. I'm him. You know what I'm, I'm him. Marvin, Marvin got me made this uh, motherfucking red sequence jacket, sequence red. Hey man, shout out to Marvin. Yo, man. Shout out to Marvin. Marvin's the man. Early, yeah. early. Marvin was early, early. I ain't even understand. I'm like sequence Marvin. I ain't, I'm telling you, nigga. When the light gonna <laughs> hit that bitch. You, nigga. When the light spotlight hit it, it's not like shit. genuine. Yeah. When the light, hey, 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 it's star shit, dog. Trust me, dog. Star shit, dog. You know what I mean? So, and Marvin was a fly. He was fly. You know what I mean? Always was fly. He knew how to, t so it's like I learned, I learned that swagger from him, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then, so I started doing that, started performing. He started taking me around and we started getting traction. Mm -hmm. And and I was going to New York all the time, going to studio sessions, and I really started falling in love with the process of making songs. Mm -hmm. You know, walking in a studio and <clears throat> there's nothing. And then like after a few hours, there's something. Yeah, absolutely. Something. That whole concept to me was mind blowing. And Marvin would be like, Ryan, you could write. Like he would hear little songs, little raps I had, little whatever. I wasn't writing no stuff in the beginning, um, but he was like, you should focus on your writing. And I didn't even understand, I don't think so. Wow. I just got a little song. He was like, I'm telling you, Ryan, you got a gift. You need to focus, you should focus on your writing. So he planted that seed in me early. And then I just fell in love with that process, man. Like, like I said, people with stu studio equipment was was amazing to me. All these buttons and knobs and this and that and what this doing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It looked like you in a rocket ship. Yeah. You know, even if it was in somebody's basement mm -hmm. or in somebody's bedroom, it's still you know. So that was always fire to me. And we started cutting, you know, started recording little songs and shit like that. And then we just kept getting more and more traction. And Marvin, he. <laughs> He was cold, man, because he was the type of nigga, he'll run down on anybody. He don't give a fuck. We would just yeah. go to New York and post up outside of record labels. Wait for people to come outside. Everybody needs a Marvin, man. You better believe it. Run up, run up on him. Hey, man. Da -da 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 -da. He talk his talk. He fast. He from Harlem. His whole family from Harlem. Oh, he talk. And they was, they was big dogs in Harlem. Yeah. He come from a long line of, like, you know, big niggas. So yeah. even, like, he, you know, some of his, like, you know, people they was like funding my little project and it yeah. was it was it was lit like yeah. i was like so i fell in love with it real Listen, fast man, the, the, you know the streets mean? put all of us on yeah absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. the streets put all of us it just all is what us. it is exactly yeah. so that that whole life you know it just I, I i started to love it it was keeping me out of trouble my parents was happy and i was learning about myself the music was sounding fire marv was like a father to me his two sons was like family to me his mom was you know i was with them all the time you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, we started recording. He would run down on people, get people's numbers, <laughs> make me sing. Ryan, hit 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 the thing, right? You know what I mean? The Subway, <laughs> whatever. Walking down the street, we in New York, in Manhattan, anywhere. Hit it, hit that thing, man. And I I used to hate it because it was still triggered at like stage uh, fright thing. Yeah, yeah. But 
I don't know, Marv was, I don't know, Marv was cool. So he was fly. So it was like, I ain't want to let him down. Yeah. So I just would do it. It was more fun with yeah. him. You know what I mean? And my parents was letting me hang with this nigga. <laughs> like, yeah, he was older. He was cool. He had girls. I, like, say, you know I knew he had work. <laughs> yeah. had be, listen, as the young fellas would say, he had motion. Yeah. Yeah. He had motion. You know what I mean? So I was just, I was just getting like a real good, a good uh, education in that. And then the, that's when it started getting like more professional. Mm -hmm. That's when it was like, all right, I'm different than my friends. Like, we go to school together, but like, nigga, I'm I'm leaving at like yeah, me and Marvin, yeah, me and Marvin going to New York at <laughs> one o'clock after session. lunch. I'm out. Yeah, we got a session. Yeah, got so session, I could so. leave school early and like yeah. you know what I mean. Teachers was letting you know Marvin signing me out of school and we driving up to New York. That was the shit. Or taking the train. Yeah. That was. It was nothing more fun than that. So how long does it take you to get a deal? Or do you get the deal? No, I didn't Out get a deal. I didn't get a deal. We started working with um, this this uh, jazz flautist named Bobby Humphrey, right? She um, she was managing artists. She started working with Marvin. They started like co-managing me. So it was like levels, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? <clears throat> so Marv started making more better connections. Um and then we end up meeting, um, I, I did sing, this is a funny story. One day we had a meeting with Gerald Busby, yeah. right? Uh -huh. So we go to Motown. We had a meeting with Gerald and uh, I think, I forget the name of the guy that was right up under him. We, so we end the meeting. Is it Motown or is it MCA at the time? Because if the guy that was under him at that time would have been like, Lil Silas. I feel like it was... Motown because wasn't Biv Ten with Motown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it was Motown at that point. Yeah. yeah, this is a funny story. We was in this meeting, and this is when we was going around the different labels. We was going around the um, we met with Max Goose at Giant. And yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Like, so we was Max going to different labels. That was our thing. We would go to labels. We would get Mar you know, get his get get a little meeting situation set up. Go in the office, and I would do my thing. Mm -hmm. But we never had no real demo. You know what I mean? Right. We never, you know. We didn't have no real demo. So they'd be like, man, why don't you get some songs, some real songs recorded on them and come back and then that, you know, cause so that way they could play my music for their bosses and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Cause Marv was just gutter with it. Nah, he gonna come in and he just gonna sing that shit and y'all yeah. gonna love it. Yeah. But that wasn't, it never really it like, process, yeah, it wasn't yeah. the process. But this one particular time, the A&R guy, or I forget his name, he was under Gerald Busby. He, he, he walked out the office. So me and Marv sitting there and we sitting there by his side. He like, fellas, I'll be right back. So he leaves. So Marv like, watch the door, Ryan. I was like, what? He's like, watch the door. So he got me on lookout. <laughs> Marv goes around the desk and goes through this nigga Rolodex and start writing down numbers. This is how cold Marv was. Oh, shit. He going through the Rolodex. Oh, write down the number. Go on. Write down the number. Write down the number. Write down the number. He get, he get uh, Michael Bivens' number. Write that shit down. Oh, shit. Niggas start hitting up Michael Bivens. Yeah, man, what's up, Mike? Yeah, you don't remember uh, I met you at the, uh, you don't remember it was at that party. I forget who party it was. Remember you told me, man, I could bring my artist and da 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 Mike like, nah, oh, what's your name again? Like, who you? you know? It's Marvin, and This is This is like Michael <laughs> Bivens. This is at, like, it's Marvin. Yeah. yeah, this Marvin, exactly. <laughs> he like, uh, this is at the height the of height. like yeah. Biv yeah. 10. ABC, yeah. Boys the Men Boys Sign. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, like MC said, Brains. Wanye, Wanye graduated from my, he graduated with my brother. So like, I'm fully aware of like, yo, this What's is, happening? This, yeah. right? Yeah. He talks Mike, Michael Bivens into letting us pull up on him at some restaurant in New York. Go to the restaurant. <laughs> He's like, man, I don't remember you. Like, nah, man, well, I mean, it don't even matter, man. This is my artist, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, da, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> We've definitely had some niggas do that to us. For sure. For sure. <laughs> no, it's all good. Jay, it's me. Yeah. What you getting into? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Sang for Michael Rivers in the restaurant. You know, Mike was, he was like, he said he would have signed me. He was like, but I'm going to keep it real with you. He's like, I'll, if I sign you now, you're not coming out for like another two years because I got, you know, just other people in the lineup. He was like, when I signed, Boy, Boys and Men was signed for like two years before yeah. they dropped. Yeah. So, you know, just little stories like that. Like, um, and then uh, we was doing all of that for a while. And then we we landed in the office of Kenny Ortiz, who was a uh, and r at RCA Records. So Kenny was like, he was, he was fucking with me heavy. But at the time he was like, man, I, I got this, this young girl group 
called SWV. I'm working on them, you know, and these three little black girls sitting on the couch, you know what I mean? Hey, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? And he's like, yeah, so I'm working on a project right now. Yeah. This is how it goes. Developing yeah. these. Or how it used to yeah, go. Yeah. yeah, you know, he was at the time developing these young producers called the Neptunes, you know what I'm saying? And um, so Kenny, he said, all right, this how we knew we was we was we was getting somewhere. Kenny was like, "You need a professional demo." So he says, um, "So I'm gonna sign you to a demo deal." You remember demo deal? Of course, I remember demo deal. <laughs> yeah. So he signs me to a demo deal, twenty five hundred dollars. He gave us twenty five hundred dollars. Said, "I want y'all to go make a demo. Go record some songs with some professional producers, some professional writers, whatever, whatever." Okay, cool. He sends us to Patterson, New Jersey. We go work with a, a production crew. I think they were called Black Hand, Black Hand Productions. We go to the studio. Um, the producers are there. Da, da, da. They say, "Yeah, we got got our writer coming in. He gonna write you, you know, write the song for you." Writer walks in the name. What's up, man? My name's Joe. Joe wow. wrote my first demo. <laughs> wow. Wow. Young, wow. wow. Young fresh face. My name is Joe. My name young, is Joe. Young fresh face. And his name was just Joe. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Joe. Yeah. Right? Just young fresh face, cold ass singer. He write the joint, reference it. I go in there, I sing, da 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 da. I also learned too that 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 game of like, you know, the, the song ain't yours, little nigga. You know what I mean? I learned that game. I learned that rule real fast too. Oh, you watch something from your demo go somewhere else? I mean that song that yeah my demo record was on his album that next oh, year. Oh, okay. I yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, cuz y'all didn't pay goes. for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. That's so I like, and and I actually I fell in love with that part of the game. I want to do that. I, and I always knew that early too. I was like yeah. it, because because of the stage fright that I carried when I would meet the Joes, the Gerald Busby's, the you know the different uh uh the the, the Devontes and the, you know what I mean? I was like I want to be that guy. Yeah. I want to be the guy on the other side of the desk, I don't want to be the nervous artist right. mm. that got to sing and make you <laughs> right. like me. I want to be the nigga that swivel around in the chair with the, you know, with the jewels and what's up, man? What's yeah. up? You know, they all, they all. I like what you're doing. They all talk like, like this, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, so, you know, I mean, what you got is good, but like, I, feel, I was like, what is that tone? That they, <laughs> what is that tone? You know, the executive tone? Niggas, you know they yeah. fresh. They got on the, like, the, you know, the Nike what sweatsuit. What is that tone? With the Nike oh, sweatsuit. You know, you're critiquing me in that tone. Yeah, man. you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I hate it. You know, I love, I love Love what we was doing, but it's like, man, I'm. T I, you go to these big offices, you know what I mean? And I'm just like the artist trying to like, I'm like, fuck that shit. I, I want to be that guy. Yeah. Or you're you auditioning go, everywhere. You're always auditioning. auditioning. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. always gotta yeah. right. Yeah. And I was like, so it, that started welling up in me. And, and with Marvin saying, you can be that because you can write. And I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and then like, you know, even how, you know, the young Joey walk in the city, they just got a certain bop to it. Like, nigga, I'm here to make, make you, make you, make nice. you nice. Yeah. It's like, damn, how do I be the guy that makes somebody nice? Yeah. He's sitting at the board, like a 48 track, you know what right, I mean? Right. He's sitting at the SSL and it's always about that swivel round in that chair yeah. when they swivel round. Did you ever get a swivel chair? Did you get, I, oh, yes, I did. <laughs> I couldn't wait. I just want to make Certain sure you things got things connect you yeah, to the moment. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, these I, are the childhood. I, I swivel all the time. <laughs> I swivel on. I swivel on these hoes all the time. I got this. I swivel on these hoes. I swivel on these hoes. <laughs> like, I got to say it like that. <laughs> you know, it's that tone of voice. It was the swivel. It was yeah. the way. It was the nonchalant. Yeah, yeah. Like I do this all day. I do this all day. You know, you're like the tenth artist that's come in <laughs> right, here. Right, right, right. The manager is like begging me to. You know, everybody's yeah, begging right. me to, yeah, to let some of the magic go. Yeah, yeah. let some of the magic go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I wanted to be that. I wanted to be that. Did you say I wish I had more time? I wish I. Had <laughs> I wish I had more time. time. Yeah. <laughs> even even the Michael Bivens like yeah I I could work with you but. It was just like, yo, these niggas are so fucking busy. What the fuck do they have? Yeah. Like, what is that? I want that thing that yeah. they got. Yeah. You know, and this is in the 90s. So this is like the dawn of it's like the, the black time. hip hop. High this high is time. the puffy era no, now. Cracking. You know what I mean? It's not just stuffy dudes nah. and suits. It's but it's not the puffy young, era. Really? Yeah, it's the Michael Bivens era. the Michael era. Bivens era. Because be he clear. was puff he was before the pre puff. Yeah, oh. He was puff before puff. That's yeah. a fact. Mike Biv was the guy. Two fly. So oh yeah, yeah yeah. So whatever that young black power figure that's from my era that looked like me, mm -hmm. that's hip hop, but he's corporate somehow or executive, but hip hop, but young and you know what I mean? I was like, I just I want that. I need that. Yeah. I need that. I wanted that more than I wanted the stage. Mm. You know what I mean? 
So, but obviously to get there with my route, it was like I was going the stage route, which was fine. Mm -hmm. um, so moving from there after Kenny saw me, we did the little demo and then uh, boom, a year later, those three little black girls had the hottest song on the radio. <laughs> Mind you, when we, uh, after the Michael Bivens meeting, Michael, uh, he invited us to his birthday party that night. So we go to Michael Bivens' birthday party and like all oh, the celebrities, you know, everybody there, that's, you know, the Heavy D's and the Sherry Carter's and the Donnie Simpson's and Boys the Men and yeah, yeah. Grand Poobas. What's up, shorty? Yeah, yeah. I'm 14 years old, mind you, in this club, in this party with Marvin. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. A Grand Pooba from Brand Nubians is like, so shorty, you having a good time? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Okay. He was like, hey, man, come here. I want you to meet somebody. She's my homegirl. Her name Mary. She's a singer, too. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Little black girl named Mary. Right. Year later. Like, so when I started, I was like, what the fuck it's is real. this magical yeah, shit yeah, that yeah, happens? Yeah. Where it's like you meet somebody, it's just they and then a year later, it's magic. And everybody's young and black and fly. And the music is incredible. So that was when it was like, okay, this, I'm 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 in it now. This mm -hmm. is what we gotta we gotta really turn this shit up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was yeah, Kenny Kenny found out about the auditions for Sister Act that Disney and Touchstone were looking for kids that could sing and dance. And originally they was I was just auditioning to be in the just the ensemble, just in the background, yeah, the choir, yeah. background yeah. shit. Yeah. And I had never acted before. Wasn't thinking about no movies or nothing like that. I wanted, you know, Tevin Campbell. I wanted to be Tevin Campbell. That was another thing, too. Everywhere we went, it's like, ah, oh, man, you're really dope, but we just signed this kid named Tevin. And, ah, oh, man, you're really dope, but we we just signed this kid named Jason Weaver. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, I kept, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, so I'm watching all these little stars and starlets, you know what I mean, pop off. And uh, Kenny was like, go to this audition. I was like, audition? I, I don't want to be no actor, man. I'm trying to get a music video, you know, Tevin Campbell. And he was like, just go to the audition. Try it out. You'll see. All right, cool. I ain't had no agent. I wasn't in SAG. You know what I mean? But that's how me and Marvin rolled. We ain't, yeah. we ain't had shit. We ain't never gave a fuck. It was just like, we just, you know, gorilla with it. Mm -hmm. So they got me on the list. And I went in there. All these kids in there, you know, little actor kids, and you know, oh, and then yeah, all just getting ready, thing. you know, yeah, doing yeah. the whole thing, yeah. stretching, ballet, and I'm like, what the fuck? Look like fame, or yeah, somebody, for sure. you know what I mean? For sure. <laughs> and I go into the audition. <laughs> they even told me like, um, Marv was like, uh, listen, if 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 you if they're real cold and short with you, you know, kind of like you know, all right, thank you. Next, he was like, you know, don't don't take that no way. Just just go in there, do your thing. All right, cool. So I go in there. The lady, I'll never forget, she uh, she was sitting at her desk. She had her little tripod set up with her camera. She never even looked up at me. Name, okay. Age, all right. Uh, stand on the X. Okay, you got you got some lines. They had some little generic lines. Read the lines. Read the lines. Then she, uh, you, okay, you, you got a song you're going to sing? So I sang, uh, I think I sang, I feel like going on. Mm -hmm. I feel. I say that. I was saying that in, in in church all the time. So I sing. I feel like going on. Okay, so that's not just a song from Five Heartbeats. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Grew up in a different kind of church. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like going on. <laughs> You come from a different yeah, church. I, I thought you come church. from a different church. I, I, I thought Eddie Kane wrote that, man. I thought, I thought Eddie Kane wrote that. I thought Eddie Kane wrote that. What's wrong with you? I thought Eddie Kane wrote that. Oh, we have to cut this up. This to be a clip. <laughs> Jay Valentine thought. He Eddie thought Kane the Bob Harpies was a real group. <laughs> <laughs> they were, they were the Dales in real life. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
right. All right, man. Yeah. Um, okay, so you say Eddie yeah, Kane's yeah, song. Yeah, so I say yeah, Eddie, Eddie Kane's song. song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Eddie. Yeah, shout out to Eddie. <laughs> shout out to Eddie. Um, I oh, sang man. that song, and and the lady, she stopped. She stopped the camera. She took her glasses off, nigga. She started crying in the, in the audition. No way. And then she was like, she said, oh, my God, that voice. She said, I, I got to hug that voice. She come around from the wow. desk and the camera come over to me and hugs me tight, crying. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That voice. That voice. Oh, my God. And I, so I'm standing there. This lady squeezing me. And I'm like, <laughs> is this how auditions go? Yeah. 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 Is this <laughs> you know the anointing? That like, is, that, this is, this, is the oil. Is this the oil? <laughs> <laughs> so Shit. yeah so after that i think i got had about seven callbacks golly mm -hmm. seven callbacks and the last callback was in la and mind you when i'm coming to these callbacks nigga i'm seeing the tevin campbell's coming in tatiana ali like all the all the hot everybody with motherfucking tony thompson from high five tony thompson like the guy Sheesh. the guy yeah so I'm thinking like, oh, ain't no way I'm getting this shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then, uh, but nah, it, I, they kept calling me back, and then it got down to the last two kids, which was me and uh, this other kid named Chaz Shepard, who's actually a good friend of mine. And um, during, I never forget, like Bill Duke was be coming up with the character in the auditions. I'd like do little lines, then they will huddle. Bill Duke and the producers. And he's throwing on, hey man, say this. So I'm thinking a shot, right? Where we can come down and we can do it and catch him with the kufi on. Like they was yeah, like developing yeah, this character. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and that was going on every audition. And they, I, unbeknownst to me, they were like creating a role for me. Wow. Which was like dope. really, really fire. And then, that's you know, dope. so then then it's like, okay, we, 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 we here now. We're professionals now. This is a real thing. You know, and then we got the call that they wanted me in the movie, and we flew out to L.A. And then we started getting it cracking from there. Is this your first time in L.A.? First time point? in L.A. First time. How old are you? Fifteen. Jeez. Yep, I was fifteen. A youth. Yep. Met a young Lauren Hill. Hmm. We hit it off because we was the only two kids from Jersey, mm -hmm. and me, her, and Jennifer Love Hewitt were the only real high school students in the cast. Everybody else was older. Everybody else was grown. Oh now. wow, okay, okay. Yeah, so Jennifer we, yeah. Love Hewitt. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So we all would have you know go to tutoring and stuff like that, and you know uh, Lauren stayed uh, in the apartment below me, I think, at the at the at the used to be the. Oakwoods. The Oakwoods. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Oakwoods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, y'all know about the Oakwoods? Y'all know about the yeah. Oakwoods. Yeah. 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 Cor corporate housing. Corporate housing, baby. <laughs> yeah. I fell in love with a Lauren Hill over at the Oakwoods, boy. Man, I had a crush on her. And you know what broke my heart? Her real dude came to visit one time. You know who it was? Who? Omar Epps. Yeah, that's The sucks. juice nigga. You couldn't compete. It you was, couldn't compete, bro. He was out of your league. You couldn't compete. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. The juice nigga Oh my Omar, Omar Epps was fading everybody. Oh my God. It's a guy. It's oh a guy. God. He's a star of juice. Oh what? my God. What could I do? What? You seen that? You see what they taught him at the end of the movie? Got the juice now. Was higher learning out yet? Not not quite yet. No, no, no. This this we was about fresh off juice. Fresh. Fresh, he was Monster. the one. Yeah, you lost that battle. Oh, I lost it so bad. <laughs> he was oh, a guy too. I ain't gonna lie, that shit still hurt. That shit still hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, cause I was just too. I was young, you know what I mean. I was young. I wanted to be, you know. I'm, I'm still, you know. But I wasn't like, I wasn't developed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, he was developed. He was he's like, a he was a grown man. You know what I'm saying? Man. I'm like, <laughs> he, had a, he had adult presence. It's so much difference between 15 and 20. It's a, oh, a night my and day. God. So much difference between Night a fifteen year old young boy Listen. and a twenty year old young man. But especially Listen. if you're like I didn't even have a you're, license. You're actually a savage. Right. <laughs> that too. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? You could you could look at a young Omar Epps and be like Yeah. That Yeah. That little nigga's a savage. Yeah. 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 But wow. I yeah, I garnered a lot of respect for him that day and just understood like, okay, you gotta take what you want in this world. You can't like Here's the crazy part though. Here's around, a question but... for you. Did you know at that time? That Omar Epps could sing. He can sing? I didn't know that either. I knew he could rap. Omar Epps can sing. No shit. Really? Me, Omar Epps, uh, 
text and somebody else sat at a piano in Cancun and harmonized Jodeci for about an hour. No fucking wow. way. On my mama. Hey, Omar, come on. Wow. Man. Yeah. Come on to the couch, man. And yeah. I'm looking at this on, nigga man. like, are you, you kidding me? Wow. I'm going to tell you. You know, you know, my sister used to work for him. No. She, that was my sister's first job in the industry. Now she's at Netflix and she's a big mm-hmm. executive. She used to be Omar's assistant. No wow. way. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, he can sing. I'm calling wow. Tanya. Tanya, we need Omar on wow. the damn. Yeah. Well, then he's really the man. No, he can yeah. sing. I was wow. looking at him. I was like, you, are you kidding me? Wow. Yeah, I don't really, you know, I don't really do all that thing. Yeah, I just, yeah. you know. He's I mean, singing then, lead. He's not then, singing right, just the background. Hey, right, and, then right. he, and then he married Keisha from Total. Like, then he married Keisha from You win, brother. You win. You win. You win. You win. I, went, I, went to a, I went to a, uh, I went to a Christmas party at their house, uh, him and uh, his, his wife's house. Uh, this was some years ago. And I went with some friends. And and you know what I mean? It's just like, this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Like ever since we like, was kids, like, you know, like, you've been the same like, selfish you know? mother. <laughs> <laughs> Everything goes back to five heartbeats, bro. It all goes back. It all goes back. It all goes back. It's the greatest R&B movie it. of yeah. all time, bro. Nah, that. shout out to Omar. He been the goat. Yeah, clearly. Super, oh, that's great. Super guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Nah, so, those so you, so you, okay. Give me the movie drops. Hmm. And it is a huge success. Yeah, bro, you in the movie? No, with... no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Whoopi Goldberg? It didn't. It didn't kick from the rip. Nope. A lot of people don't know. So, it was actually considered a flop, the sequel, because the first one did about two fifty in the box oh, okay. office okay. worldwide. Yeah. And then the se- the sequel only did about fifty. So that's, mm. a, that's oh a, yeah yeah that's yeah. A, a dip, right? So they considered that a flop. So Sister Act Two. So I went back to high school. I went back home. What's the vibe? You know what though? I mean? What's the vibe? Though? It's it, got to be a, a nothing, different vibe. No, oh. no. The movie didn't pop, bro. And I, oh, Happy Day, and at the the movie did not pop. Oh, that's crazy. It didn't pop in theaters. It popped on television through reruns and through. You Shout out me? to BT. That's, that no, really, it was. <laughs> it was. Um, was it? It would be like. Um, what's that channel? Like Lifetime. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like, I think TLC. And then there was another network that would like show it every Thanksgiving. And then that started, and then HBO got it. And then it's coming on HBO. So it just started to become a classic. It started to become a cult classic via television. Right. And Mm. through people watching it, you know, renting it, buying the VHS tapes. Cause this is even where anybody who comes up to me is like, man, I grew up. Watching you, man. We used to rewind that they tape rewind, till yeah. the tape pop, man. Yeah. We played that DVD so much, my kids broke that thing, bro. We grew up singing, watching you every year. It would come on during the holidays. Yeah. So, so what happened was, so I go home when I first go home. I mean, people went and saw it, so I had friends, family that saw it, but it wasn't like right. a phenomenon. It was, yeah. it was oh, just yeah, kind of like, right. oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so I was back in yeah. high school. Yeah. I was just back. With my friends, you know, it was regular, regular, like that was it. It wasn't really nothing. And then that I graduated high school. I did the movie 93. I was 16. It didn't start turning into a thing till I was like in my in the club. I was like 21, 22. So like five, six, seven years later. Then it's like, yo, I just watched you last night on is you the guy? Yo, I just seen right. you last yeah. night. Yo, me and my family just watched you. And then that started to Bubble. Bubble yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't yep. either. I'm thinking this whole time, you got cracking. Yeah. I mean, because we, Mm-mm. I think though, because we're singers, you know, we're creative. First time I saw it, I'm when like, we saw it. That yeah. nigga cold. But we you didn't like, see it in the theater. I might have. I, I don't remember. I, I, I don't remember. I, 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 remember. I can I almost guarantee didn't. most people that say they saw it or, yeah. you know, when they was young or whatever. Yeah. I'm like, you watched it on TV, didn't you? And it's like, they, yeah, now you think about I it. Yeah, we watched it on TV. You didn't, well, go didn't to the, you didn't go to I the might, movies. I might have went to the movies though, because okay. I was a huge Whoopi Goldberg fan. I used to okay. love Whoopi okay. Goldberg, bro. Mm-hmm. She was she was a superstar, super, super yeah. duper. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and my mother loved Whoopi Goldberg, yeah. so mm-hmm. Ghost and you know what I'm saying. We would go mm-hmm. to the, and even her stand up, all this stuff we would watch. We yeah. would watch Whoopi Goldberg. She was hilarious. So yeah. I'm pretty sure I might have saw the movies. Yeah, you might have seen yeah, the movies. And nigga, yeah. I was like, that nigga right there, mm-hmm. him and her, yeah, you and Lauren. I was like. 
Oh my God. Now Lauren popped off because she had the Fuji's group immediately following. Right. Mm -hmm. So immediately after the movie, but the, I had, the Fuji's I discovered came out. that mm -hmm. when the Fuji's came out though. Yeah. I put two and two together. I was yeah. like, wait, that's right. It wasn't it yeah. wasn't one of those it things where it was promoted and it was yeah. like, yeah. oh yeah, that's the Well girl their from their first album didn't do that that well. The first album, the first Fuji album. Okay. It didn't really that one didn't blow up. But then um they had the song You Mona Lisa. Can yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <clears throat> so then I think they might have, I think Wyclef told me, he said, we might only sold like 100, 150,000 copies or whatever. He was like, so when they went back in to do the second album, when they went to do the score, he was like, man, we was just trying to go gold just so we could keep, we wouldn't get dropped. Keep and the then the on. score yeah. obviously sold 20 million. Right. <clears throat> but like, yeah, that's how that went. So you go back to high school, you finish school. I finish school. I, Are I, you still trying to get a deal? Are you even on that? It was, man, that was a tough time. Where's Marvin? Because I couldn't, I couldn't get a deal. Where's Marvin? No, no, no. So so Marvin and I has, you know, due to some other little things, whatever things he had going on in his life, whatever, whoop de woo Y'all parted ways. We was like parted ways a little bit. And we were still friends, but we wasn't really, really rocking like that, yeah. like that on the business side. And, um, and I couldn't get a deal. Gotcha. Because it would it would be like the we just signed so and so right. we just signed so it was always like a month just one in your step way. too late or one you know what I mean it was real weird I don't know so I'm back in school I'm now I'm just like all right I'm just doing the school thing we getting ready to graduate everybody going to college I'm like well I guess I should just go to college mm -hmm. so I just applied for the only college I could get into <laughs> and I got into Grambling and I went to Grambling for like a semester because I'm like yeah this college shit ain't for me. So you went down to Louisiana. I went all the way down to Grambling, Louisiana. Shout out to Grambling mm -hmm. State, but it wasn't for me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, he forty went to Grambling. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. forty went to Grambling too. Yeah, and and it, like Grambling, not for what I wanted to do. Like I, I wanted to be in music. I wanted yeah. to do that. So if you're not playing in the band mm -hmm. or the, on the football team or some it type of, make sense that, that well, culture's not there. That's not yeah. the culture for yeah. you. Or pledging, and I wasn't going to pledge. So that was that was that black college experience. Yeah. Football, band, pledging, you know, whatever. So I'm like, this wasn't really for me. So I never went to class and none of that. And um, my parents wasn't tripping because I, I was making money. So I paid for my own way to school. So when I called them, told them I don't want to do this no more, they was like, all right. Plus, I had two friends that I did meet uh, through Marvin in Philly named Dre and Vidal. Ah. Our brothers, yeah, let's talk about for our brothers. You the feel me, Jerry, Dre, and you feel Vidal. me, yeah. Dre and Vidal, yeah. very young Dre and Vidal, my Philly, my Philly brothers, man. They was hitting me up because they like, yo, man, Jazzy Jeff got a studio. Touch it, Jazz. He letting us come to his studio, nigga. We working on music, da da da. da. Yo, man, they sending me beat tapes of the beats they making. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. blowing my whole wig off, and I'm in the dorm like, what am? And they like, you need to be here. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm thinking about the whole semester, like, oh my god, like, he like I'm telling you, man, Jeff, man, he got niggas working, you know what I mean? So I go down, young uh, Carvin Higgins, you know what uh, I mean, yeah, and Ivan, yeah, and yeah. young Jill Scott's floating around, and. Young Glenn Lewis is running around and like you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And so Jeff really Jeff's school was the university. Yeah. Jeff's stu that yeah, touch of real. jazz was the university for, for a nigga like me, for cats like us. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? So um so I I left college, came back home, and I started going to uh touch of jazz. I moved to Philly and then I started going down there every day. You know what I'm saying? And um, Jeff was cool. He was like, yeah, man, you can come down. You can get down with us. In the beginning, Carve was writing all my songs. You know what I mean? So I still wasn't like all the way. You still away. hadn't become a full songwriter either. Nah. So you but ironically, ironic, what's funny is on on uh, in Sister Act 2, the, in Joyful Joyful, the little mm -hmm. rap part, Joyful mm -hmm. Joyful. Yeah, yeah. I wrote that. I wrote that rap. Okay. I wrote that at, in rehearsal one day on a napkin. So your rap bars was up. Yeah, but I wasn't even thinking about it like writing. I was yeah. just... Fucking around one day, did you, get looking, you know, for joy for joyful? boy, did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was my first lesson. I learned yeah. that. I kind of skipped yeah. over that part. I got my first gold record when I was 16. Yeah, come on, come on, gold yeah. record, Sister Act 2. Joy for joy, yeah, Sister Act 2. We was, oh, in, we, we, we was in rehearsal real quick. We was in rehearsal one day, and the, the dude, uh, Ron, the actor who played Sketch in the movie, mm -hmm. the black kid, we were on break, and I was like, Where Ron at? And they like, Oh, he's in the, some of the break room. So I go in there, and he's in there, and he got the track looping. 
and he trying to come up with something. I was like, what, what you talking? He's like, oh, they, they want like a little rap breakdown for the song right here. So I was like, what you got? And he kind of rapped something. I was like, nah, man, don't say that shit, man. Like, say this. And I just like freestyled that shit. Joyful, joyful. Little, we, I was a little rapping little nigga back then. So I like we share said that. that. We, yeah. We, <laughs> we share. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you a story. Okay, okay. We're about. So um, they, he was like, oh, man, write that down. I wrote it on a napkin and I left the room. And then my attorney called me maybe like a couple of days later, just checking on me. Like, hey, my attorney was in New York. He like, they treating you good out there? Like, yeah, everything's good. I, I wrote this rap thing I think they're going to use in a movie. And da, 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 da. He, he, was, he was like, wait, wait what? Yeah. Wait a minute. He yeah. was like, what? You did what? You Excuse wrote me? what? The who and what? He's like, let me call you right back. Call me back about an hour later. I was like, Ryan, let me tell you about something called publishing. Yeah. Publishing? <laughs> What's that? You know what I'm saying? And he broke that down to me and, and got me paid. Got <sighs> me paid handsomely, actually. Mm. I actually had point, producer points on that. Come on. Track. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Jeff Haver. My my attorney was no joke. Yeah. So anyway, fast forward, but I still wasn't like writing. Yeah. I just that was just some shit yeah. I did. You so know you what I mean? You it. Yeah. But so coming into Jeff's camp, I'm watching Carvin. Carvin is writing the songs, and I'm watching. Yeah. You know, and I'm masters I'm, at work. Yeah. And then now yeah. I'm in a real. This is a million dollar plus studio. Like Jeff's studio was fire. <laughs> And so I'm like seeing real music songs being crafted, like with cats that was real, like producers and musicians and like, you know, young Dream Vidal, hungry niggas that's like cooking up this fire ass music. And it was like, this is it. Like, I get it. This is it. And then I started writing, started writing my own stuff. And because I could sing and rap back then. And this is before Drake. This is before, you know what yeah. I mean? This was back when singers were singers. And yeah, rappers people. were yeah, rappers, yeah. Right. you know what I mean? And so almost to the point where it was like an Achilles heel, like record labels were like, well, we don't get it. Is he a singer or is he a rapper? Mm. Cause I'd be rapping the verses and right. singing the hooks. And you think they would have understood because when Lauren came. Yeah, but- Right, like yeah, you think that they would have. Yeah. But there was no real male They probably didn't that. even understand no. that though. No. It just was, Lauren might have just, just been the anomaly. Yeah. yeah, she might have yeah. been the anomaly. And she was in a group with rappers, so they might have looked at it like she's just the girl singer. I don't know if they took her that seriously. I don't think I don't they know. took her seriously as a singer until she put her on her project solo out, yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, she's a singer. She's, singer. she's, singer. she's everything. Yeah. yeah. She's everything. Yeah. Like you. You yeah. couldn't at that point you couldn't deny what she was. You yeah. couldn't pick and choose. She's everything. Yeah. So that was that was tricky for me. That was like one of the it was like after the Marvin era. Now I'm in the touch of jazz era. Mm -hmm. And it was like I still couldn't get no deal. Cause it was like they were like, Oh well, you you need to pick a lane. Like, are you singing or are you rapping? So I was like, damn, I didn't really understand it. And then Will Smith comes along. I mean, well, let me say Jeff started putting me in writing sessions. Mm -hmm. You know, for Darius Rucker, Hootie and the Blowfish. Like, yeah. We got Darius Rucker coming down, Ryan. You want you want to write the song? Like, So now I'm understanding writing for somebody. Mm -hmm. David Hollister is coming down. This one's mm -hmm. coming down. That one coming down. I wrote uh, uh, the theme song for this TV show called uh, Between Brothers that was out for a little while with Tommy Davidson, Kadeem Hardison, mm -hmm. and a couple other people. Um, and I wrote the theme song. So then now I'm getting this understand. While I'm waiting to try to get this record deal, mm -hmm. You could still be cooking. You could yeah. still be making money, and it was working because I could sing. I could write. I could write for singers, but then I could write for rappers. I could do whatever I wanted to do, and um, then uh, I'll never forget. Jeff called me one day. It was like, "Yo, Will came to the studio." I was like, "Oh, okay." And he's like, "Yeah, he heard. I played him some of your songs. He want to record them. He want to record this. You know, a couple of your songs." I'm like. The Fresh Prince, Will Smith, like, you know what I'm saying? And he's like, "Yeah, man." I was like, "You sure, man?" But those, those are my songs. Like, you know what I mean? For, oh, I'm trying had, to get you, you know that what moment. Mean? I had that you moment. Had that moment. And shout out to Jazzy Jeff, boy. He gave me, he he gave me the, he gave me the gems. He was like, "Listen, Ryan, you are a songwriter. You create music. You create songs. This is what you do." And you don't have to keep them all for yourself. If you sell them to somebody else, you're gonna make more. He was like, look at Missy Elliott. This is how, you know what I mean? Yeah. Missy was writing for people before mm -hmm. she got on. So when Jeff, he broke it down to me like that, I was like, cool. So, and I was doing like theater. I was doing Broadway in between. I was still doing little things. I was eating. I was good. 
But he was like, I, I ain't, I ain't cracked that that record deal. I ain't get that music video yeah, yet. You yeah. know what I mean? I ain't get to my Prince moment yet. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like I wanted to. We're still going after Prince. Yeah, I was still. You know, he was my guy. So, um, we recorded this one song on Will called "I Loved You," and then Will was like, "Yo," um, he was like, "You, you feel like writing me another one?" I was like, yeah. So. Me and uh, Keith Pelzer down at uh, Touch of Jazz, we did another song for him called Don't Say Nothing. And then he was like, Will was like, um, he was like, yo, um, I'm going out to LA to work with like Warren G and Snoop and you know, whatever. He was like, you want to come? And I was like, uh, yeah. I was like, um, when you going? He's like, tonight. I was like, oh. I was like, uh, well, do I need to go pack or then meet you at the airport? He said, no, nigga, got my, we got our own plane. I was, I was like, what? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. levels. <laughs> the fresh fucking prince. <laughs> Me, him, and his new little bad little girlfriend named Come Jada. On. You know what I mean? Like, oh, God. oh, and Charlie Mack. Like, yeah, and Charlie Mack. Mac. Nah, Charlie it's just, Mac. us. it's just us on the plane. <laughs> That's it. And snacks. You know what I mean? And snacks. You and feel snacks. me? And Love I, you know, snacks. so started flying around with Will. And and I just started learning more about like the whole writing game and and being that writer for people, and and it was fun and I liked it. And then it, it was like, oh, so I can still make money, yeah. I can still have a good time, I could be around celebrities and all of that. And you know, and then and obviously I'm still trying to pursue my music thing, but I mean my solo thing. But man, I started falling in love with it, boy. You found, found your groove a lot. Yeah, I found a you groove. Found your groove. And and then I really, really enjoyed more than anything the craft of creating songs. Mm -hmm. Like I learned how to make records. Like, you know, Vidal, like I learned how to engineer watching Vidal. He's a fucking genius. Yes, like he, he was a genius yeah. then. Like I'm learning how to make tracks watching Dre. Like these we were young and like Niggas was phenoms, yeah, like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? 100%. And we was learning and Jeff opening his doors to us and letting us just work all night long. And like, you know what I mean? That was just amazing. And then the artist was coming through and then we was cooking and it just kind of took on a life of its own. And that was like the Touch of Jazz era. So were you signed mm -hmm. as Touch of Jazz? I was signed as an artist. I wasn't signed as a writer. Mm -hmm. I was signed as an artist. So, so it was, it was cool because like uh, i was i was doing my artist thing with jeff but then like the writing thing he was allowing like, you to go yeah. yeah to really to really flourish in the writing exactly. but he did exactly. but you weren't signed to him publishing or anything no so when will wanted to take yeah. me to yeah. la like jeff ain't stopped that and so i went to la worked with will a little bit and then will was like yo i'm going to new york to work with the track masters Track master. So then we fly into so New you York. Tapping yeah. in with everybody. You tapping going. in, flying Jesus on the Sony Christ. jet. Tommy Tommy Matola gave oh, gave now, Will the Sony jet. Now to, we're on the Sony to jet. To fly around. We, we were on the fresh to make the album. Now we're on the Sony jet. Actually, it was the Sony jet the whole time. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I, you know. I was like, you know, what? Because Will was on Columbia. This is after uh, Men in Black. He had the big single Men in Black, and then he wanted to do a whole album, and he was doing it through Columbia. And so a Tommy gave him the jet to, to fly around and make the album. So I'm flying around with Will Smith while we're working on this Somebody big Willie's album. Somebody got the jet to fly around and make our this album. Is, yeah, this is some yeah. bullshit, record company got a jet right now? I, all of them. All of them. Quietly. Quietly, they all have one. Kaiser, what's going on, man? Michael, Michael Kaiser. Julie Greenwald. What is going on? Just called me the other day. Right. Craig you Kalman. You didn't I'll, call me about a jet. Mm -hmm. Right, you didn't call me about a jet. Yeah, right. talk about this. But what Brian I just, Toby has told I us, I, <laughs> all you, all of you guys have jets. <laughs> There's a jet you can fly around on and make an album. With. It's that company jet. I heard. I think I heard like Mariah was mad because you know she was. That was she yeah. would fly around on the yeah, so, and he jet. gave it to Will for that time. It was Will's turn. It was Will's turn to fly around. On. Yeah, so we was flying around. We was cooking and we working with track masters. I'm writing for Will in one room. Nas is writing for Will in another room. And we we was just going crazy. It was it was amazing. That was amazing, an amazing experience. That's crazy. Shout yeah. out to Will Smith. That's yeah. what yeah, shout throw out to that Will. out there. And then you write Miami. We we do the Miami. I did four songs on that album. I and I ain't had no publishing deal. Ooh. You wrote Welcome to Miami. Yeah. With, no, with publishing no publishing deal. deal. Yeah. And I had four songs on the album. But here here's the 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 the, the funny part. So we finished recording. 
and I still ain't got no record deal, which was really what I always been gunning for. Right. These other things was just like, okay, I'll do that on the side. Yeah. But I really want a record deal. Oh, a movie situation? Okay, I'll try that. But yeah. I need to get this record deal, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we finished the album. Will goes back to LA. That's okay. And then I'm, I'm back in Philly. I'm like, damn, I got, I got a little baby on the way. And you flying and, uh, commercial his, now, his album didn't. I'm back to flying commercial. <laughs> Hey, it's a difference it though, sucks. when that shit happens. I hate that you do that. It <laughs> sucks. That, that's like an Omar Epps stab right no, there. No, no, no. The Army, the Omar Army got Money Podcast wants, <laughs> wants people to know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's no, this, it's man. Like, yeah, it ain't all that. You it's can't go this, just man. sit here and just Listen. talk that talk. No, Listen, man, bring on, it back down. I was right? on Jamie's jet. Yeah. yeah, I was on Floyd Mayweather's jet. Yeah. But then it was time for me to fly. I think I'm going to take the window, the exit yeah, row window. Right. Right. You know, if I'm paying for it. I think right. the exit row window is... Exit row. Listen, bro, you don't get you don't get any miles when you fly private, bro. That, you yeah, know what I mean? It's whatever. And I was going That's, for the miles. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, they don't be getting no miles get no flying miles. private. Right. Like, right. That shit cool, but right. I need my miles. Right. 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 That's, right. That's kind of right. how I chopped it up. Right. You can have Mastro's <laughs> on, on, on the private jet. You can Ooh. have, like, Mastro's. Still can't get like, your miles, But you can't get miles. can't get your miles. They do got they got John and Vinny's in Delta first class. You ain't you ain't getting that cracker and fruit plate. Yeah. They come in the box. You know what I'm saying? Like that's you need that. You need that. You need that. All right, all right, all right. We back in Philly. We back in Philly. This thing is crazy, man. So I'm back in Philly. Will's gone. Everybody's gone. <laughs> I started this shit. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. He said everybody's gone. Everybody's gone. Oh my shout god. Shout out to Will though. Will shout out to Will. He he hit me up. It was it was coming around Christmas time. It was like holiday time. He sent me like he sent me like a little check. He sent me like I think he made like twenty five hundred dollars or something. Just like a little Christmas present. Just like yo, no, it's Christmas. Da, 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 da. The album ain't come out yet. I think the first single was cruising. And that single ain't do well. Mm -hmm. So then my, I'm panicking now because Jeff is like, I'm coming to the end of my deal with Touch of Jazz as an artist. And he like, yo, it's fourth quarter. Labels ain't really signing nobody. It's been tricky to get me a deal. I had fire music, but it was like, like I said, they didn't know what the lane was. So then, you know, it was actually, it was like part of Jeff's idea. Well, while we waiting, you might as well start selling these songs, which is what we did. <clears throat> but we, I sold them the will. But then Will's first single they put off at, on the album, it didn't Started do well. Slow. So now I'm like, Fuck. I don't know if this is the, yeah, yeah. So my first little, you know, my daughter's on the way, you know, my little girlfriend's pregnant. And I'm just like, oh my God, like what's going on? So uh, that's when I run into Marvin after, you know what I'm saying? Bump into Marvin. Come on, Marvin. And, come, on, uh, come on, Marvin. <laughs> what you got up, Marvin? <laughs> yeah, right? You so been Marvin, in Harlem? Marvin was like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Marvin's like, yo, I'm managing this kid. Um, he's he signed the Wyclef's new label. Um, you should come write some songs for him. His name Robbie. He's actually from Willingboro. You know him. So I was like, Robbie, yeah, Robbie Paul. I was like, oh, I remember him. He was a couple of grades behind me. Mm -hmm. So like when I was a senior, he was like new young boy coming mm -hmm. into school. And I knew he could sing and stuff. We sang in the same choir class. I was just older. Mm -hmm. And then I graduated. <clears throat> so I was like, oh yeah, I know him. He was like, yeah, he was like, um, you should write some songs for him. He he's he's got a deal with Wyclef. And I was like, okay, cool. Wyclef and Jerry Wonder. So uh link up with Robbie, start writing songs for him for his solo album. Now you're Joe. Now I'm Joe. Now, now you're, you're Joe. Joe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But but I ain't have the Joe. I ain't have the <laughs> You still ain't had the swivel. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't yeah. had swivel yeah. yet. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm walking yeah. in the front door like yeah. a like a nerd. Yeah, 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 like swivel. I ain't swivel around. Yeah. I'm supposed to already be there and then you come yeah. and then I swivel around. You know, that's the whole reveal. Yeah, the reveal. <laughs> Welcome. What's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, how you doing, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah, I'm, Ryan. Stuff, I'm yeah. Ryan. I'm Ryan. How you doing? I you know, I, I ain't had a voice stuff. yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? I heard your stuff. I heard your stuff. It always has to be there. You always have to tell someone I heard your stuff. That's like a... But don't tell them what you thought about it, though. Yeah, yeah. I heard your stuff. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, so me and Robbie start cooking up. And then um, the 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 six degrees of separation is is, and we let's see if we can get this back to the five heartbeats. But the six degrees is that when Robbie was like, "Yo, I want you should come to the studio with me with with Wyclef." Now, I already 
Robbie didn't know I already knew Wyclef through Lauren. Through Lauren. Gotcha. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I remember yeah. me and Wyclef and Praz and John Forte was freestyle battling outside of Lauren's baby shower, like for like an hour yeah. in the street. Crazy. You know what I mean? I cooked them niggas, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, <coughs> just a little fun fact. A uh, little sidebar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time I, got, to I got witnesses, yeah. too. I got witnesses. Time to yeah. I got witnesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, but um, so so I knew Wyclef through Lauren, through Sister Act, whatever, da-da-da-da. And then so, and we go to the studio, and Wyclef is working on Whitney Houston, My Love Is Your Love. Mm. So when I walk in the studio... Robbie's like, this is Ryan. It's the guy that I've been doing these songs with lately. Clef is like, yo, because Clef been loving the music. Ryan, oh, nigga, you the writer, you the nigga. Uh, man, what's up, baby? Like, yo, this nigga battled me for like an hour at Lawrence. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Yo, this nigga is so dope. Da, 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 da. So Clef gave That's me right. all the love. Yeah. He's like, what you up to now? What you doing? Oh, man, you know, I'm... I'm Getting out, about to get out this deal with, with Jazzy Jeff. I just got finished working with Will Smith. He's like, you working with Will Smith, nigga? You ain't got no deal? I was like, I know, man. It's just been a little tricky, man. He's like, man, you need to come fuck with us. Me and Jerry, we got our own label, book a basement, Interscope, blah, 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 The blah. Wanda. The you know Wanda. what I mean? Jerry Wanda. <laughs> Jerry Wanda. Right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, so he was like, um, I was like, oh, okay. He's like, matter of fact, he was like, matter of fact, the vibe you and Robbie got is so cold, man. Y'all, you writing all the records for him? He's like, man, that's, y'all should be a group. So I'm like, you sure? And he's like, yeah, man, I'm telling him, y'all be a group. Y'all be like some new young Casey and JoJo shit, man. So Robbie like, yeah, man, come on, Ryan. Like, come fuck with me, bro. Like, let's let's do this shit. So I'm, I'm just looking at my situation. Got a yeah. baby on the way. Will Smith, this that, that album, uh, that single. I'm just like, oh, no, 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 Jay. Like, nigga, come fuck with us, nigga. I'll give you 30 racks. Like, right now, like... Oh yeah, he gave the Gucci man. Yeah, the full you know, Gucci man. That's, that's the Gucci. That's like, a thirty pack. Niggas don't know about pack. the Gucci man. Yeah, like Gucci man come to the studio. And if nigga, if you a hot new artist, I like he you. Got, he got thirty thousand cash yeah, for you. Me. Yeah, bring, me the, bring yeah. me the bag. You might be over at Zaytoven House or something. Yeah. Nigga pull up. Right, thirty thousand. Okay, 000. so so Wyclef got right. the okay. So, so Jerry, get Jerry. You know Wyan, Wyan. You need to come fuck, fuck with me, Wyan. Come on, Wyan, book a basement. Like, Ryan so, with a W. Wyan, yeah, no, Wyan. Yeah, Wyan. Yeah, you know, Wyan. you know Jerry. You ever yeah, 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 Jerry. Do tag, yeah. He's an awesome guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he, he keeps sangria. He keeps sangria. Oh, my God. Uh, he got sangria everywhere. Everywhere. So he right? got he got but back yeah. then it was Grandma Ye. Grandma Ye. Oh, okay. Lord. Too much yeah. Grandma Ye. Grandma Ye, everything. You was on Grandma Ye, Wayne? That's Wayne? my favorite guy. So, so we talking. He like, yo, I can sign you right now. I'll get, get you in advance. Da, 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 da. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. So... I signed. I signed with Booker Basement. My deal was up with. At, it was crazy. The timing was like the deal was, it was great. just yeah. about right to into be it. up. I walked right into that deal. So initially, originally, City High was just me and Robbie. Mm-hmm. It was just mm. the two guys, and we came up with the name because Clef was like, he was like, man, y'all two niggas remind me of them two niggas like in high school, always like beating on the lunchroom table, mm-hmm. rapping and singing and you know what I mean? He mm-hmm. used to say that all the time. Like y'all them two niggas in high school always singing and rapping and shit. That's what y'all remind me of. So when we was thinking of a name, I was thinking about the whole high school concept and yeah. then I was like, but I'm like, we ain't gonna call it Willingboro High, Burl High. Yeah. I was like, I was like, but every town, every state got a city high school, something yeah. city high school, yeah. definitely city high school. Yeah. Like I was like, so we just call it city high to make it like more universal. That's how we came up with the name. Huh. So originally it was just me and Robbie and we called the group city high. And, um, and like the, what would you do song? It was really me and him. And we just had Claudette sing on the hook. That's why she just on the yeah, So where does Claudette play? come from? Where does she? She used to come. She used to come to the studio. She was in a little group with um, uh, Will Hart from the Delphonics. Yeah, I know that. It's yeah. William Hart. Yeah, William Hart from the Delphonics. One of his kids. One of his yeah, his daughter. Okay. Can sing. So one of his daughters. So she was in a group with his daughter. They was in like a little girl group, and Robbie used to work with them. Okay. So she used to come to the studio. And um, he knew her. So, and they, they were in school at the same time. Gotcha. They went to Willow Brothers. Say, I was graduated. I was mm-hmm. already gone. And then they was in school at the same time. And they used to date. So that's how that started. So she was coming. She sang on the song, whatever. She sang on the, what would you do? So we would go to New York. 
<clears throat> Play Wyclef and Jerry, the songs we had, and when we played them that one, they was like, who is that girl? Who is the girl? Boom. Fast forward, we bring her, they meet her, they fall in love with her. Clef is like, we got to put her in a group. Y'all could be like the next Fugees. So it went from Robbie being a solo artist right. to y'all to Casey and Jojo. 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 <clears throat> now you got Fugees. Exactly. exactly. And, you know, she uh, used to work with the, the girl, she used to sing in a girl group who was signed to, I mean, whose father was like the Delphonics, which is how we get back to the Five Heartbeats. That was a layup for you. Yeah. You, you, didn't, you didn't get it. It yeah, did the kind of, it was I was stretch. trying. It was, it was a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? Okay, yeah, yeah. we'll cut that. The lob was high. All right, we'll edit that. It was, the lob it was, was high. <laughs> <laughs> We're all songwriters. The lob was high. <laughs> I was hoping. I was like, come on, Jay. Come on, Jay. <laughs> Dude, like this. Damn it, man. Damn I ain't going to pull my hamstring. <laughs> pull my hamstring. I'm fucking with your ass. <laughs> nah, but um, so we did that. And then the crazy thing is, so... Right after that, getting jiggy with it comes out. Oh shit! Mm. And goes uh, through the roof. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. it was almost like, yeah. Dang, I ain't even had to do this deal. I could have just. Oh, yeah, you start I, second guessing it a little bit. Yeah, big time. Cause I didn't, I, I, I didn't necessarily want to be in a group. You mm. know what I mean? I didn't necessarily want to do it like that. I wanted to be a solo artist or whatever. But it was an opportunity, and I needed the money. And you took the You know what out. I mean? And it was like right after that, and then we put. Then I didn't want to be in a group with a girl too. Like you know what I mean? I was like, how is this really gonna work? You know what I mean? And and then they was like little high school sweethearts for yeah. a little while, and I was just like, ah, this this could be problematic. You right. know what I mean? But I just I did it anyway. Especially and, because you probably had Omar Epps in your head. Yeah. And you, you gotta know, take what you, you want. Gotta take what you want. <laughs> <laughs> you like how I brought that one back around? Though, don't I don't. <laughs> I am still uh, me. You still, <laughs> still, him. still him. You still him. You still him. It's just horrible. No, it's not. That was beautiful, actually. R&B. That was beautiful. That's great. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was so, beautiful. But I yeah. in the group. Yeah, I in the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we was in the group. And, and y'all have what would you do as a we have early you, demo? Yeah, but we didn't. We, it didn't drop yet. You know, we were still like now. Wyclef is like grooming us, and like he's taking us on tour with him, and we're going on the uh, Campus Invasion tour, MTV. Like you know, we following his tour bus. We just in the little, we in the little, not even a Sprinter, but just like this little like seven passenger camper. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? And we just Clef like, yo, y'all just gonna follow our tour bus every night, <clears throat> all the way all across the country. He was like, and then um, we'll just put y'all on. I mean, we was going on so early, like the lights were still on. Niggas are still looking for their seats and still coming. Yeah, and yeah. we up there performing. You know what I mean? But that's how we like built our chops, going out on the road with Clef, performing every night. My, while that's going on, getting the jiggy record. with it comes out to the and goes crazy. But you didn't do getting jiggy with it too, though. Or I did didn't, I didn't okay. do getting okay. jiggy with it. So getting jiggy with it comes out, blows up crazy. And I'm like... I'm still kind of like in limbo of like, you know what I mean? The group, our group didn't blow up yet. This this album is doing well, but I mean, the album didn't come out yet. Let me just say that, just the single. But it's setting it up. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, I was still kind of in limbo of like where things are going. Um, and I think about two other singles came out off the album, Getting Jiggy With It, uh, Oh, he just get, the two of us that they came thing. out. The two of us. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I think Miami didn't come out for like a year later. Shit, okay. Yeah, but Miami came out, took off crazy. Album had obviously dropped within that time. And it was wild. It was like I was getting publishing checks like crazy. Even Clef would be like, nigga, like, where are you getting all this money from, nigga? Like, how you coming to the shows like with more jewelry on than me. <laughs> you still don't have a publishing deal. No. So I'm getting, oh, he's I'm getting, cooking. I'm getting Sister oh, Act money. Oh, cooking. I'm getting Will Smith money yeah. and all these other placements and all and this other stuff. And they got you in the Winnebago. Yeah, and he's in the Winnebago. <laughs> but you the nigga in the Winnebago. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. I, you know, I, I, I was so, I, my chair was half swiveling. You <laughs> feel me? It wasn't yeah. the full turnaround, but it was definitely, and the tone was getting way deeper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, um, and then after. Stop. stop go ahead. Stop. What do you buy? You had to buy something. Dumb shit. When you first got the. Just a lot of dumb shit. Give us one thing. Just a lot of jewelry. A lot of jewelry. Was you did you, at Jacob? Did you go to Jacob? Did you go to Jacob? 
I didn't go to Jacob because I was I was in Philly, so we had our okay. own guy. We had our we had a couple of guys in Philly okay, okay. that we was getting it with, and then Dre and Badal started blowing up. Um, the, the music Soul Child and yeah. Glenn Lewis stuff, you know what I mean? So we used to just have jewelry. It was a lot of jewelry and fur coats and like, oh, and, like oh, that. fur coats. Yeah, you bought like a fur? That. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's got yeah, a lot yeah. of dark child on it. I yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah but then you gotta ask yeah. though. Did you? Would you Stevie J with your fur? With no shirt no, on? No, no, that's no, a no, different no, type no, of floss. Went, nah, never went. Never went that far. Never went that far. I was young. I was like Stevie was older. You know what I mean? Stevie and Puff and that was that was a different caliber. That was definitely another level, but you know. But you had the fur and the jewelry. Definitely, a lot, you know, fur, the jewelry. And you're wearing this to go open? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you get them a fur? Nope. A no, Wyclef did though. Wyclef, Wyclef bought, bought them some He was furs. like, I gotta, I gotta even. Gotta match well, I think, I think, I think uh, he actually, he bought us all furs. But you know, I just was spending more money yeah. You know what I mean? Which is like, I'm now that I look at it, I'm like, why was I doing that? I got right. just had, like you chill. You had to. You know what I mean? To. So yeah, so that was, that, I think, uh, then it was like, you know, we was really in the game and uh, City High started touring like crazy and singles and nominated for a Grammy and going, you know, around the world and stuff like that. And then, uh, and then, you know, we, then we kind of hit a pocket where it was like, it wasn't going to work no more with the group when we started working on the second album. So I decided to just fall back on on my pen game, and me and me and Dre and Vidal linked back up after like a number of years of not not really talking. You know what I mean? Then we linked back up, and the first song me and Dre did in the studio, the first idea was "Superstar." Hmm. I can already tell what Tank's going to say. I don't like you. Tank's mad. Tank's mad. Not one bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Attitude is bad. <laughs> bad attitude. That was a great, but, okay, was a we, great we, night. We jumped there, though. Okay. But did you write the City High records? So you wrote yeah. What Would You Do in Caramel? Like mm -hmm. the big records from there? Absolutely. So 5-5 with five, five, Brown Eyes. That's, that's... I was writing all the songs. Wow. I was writing the songs. You know, and that was what was... Be, that was one of the things that was problematic in the group. Because if you remember how the group started... He was a solo artist. Rob yeah. was a solo mm -hmm. artist, yeah. and then I come in as the writer, as the as the writer, and then now your solo deal is now a group deal, mm -hmm. which seems cool on paper, but it's like, it but choppy. then if your group member now is, you know, clapping them is loving me, I could write raps, I could write this, and I'm writing, you know, in ten minutes, and yeah. I'm writing her parts, and yeah, you're Lionel Richie now, and yeah, exactly. So yeah. and I'm stunting, I, I'm getting money from other and, things, yeah. and I'm coming to the studio. You know what I mean? On my little baby baby Stevie J, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But but it's like, and it was just kind of then it's like the animosity started to grow. Because now you're getting checks from the City High stuff. Exactly. Too. Exactly. On the so public like side. Their checks were just so much. When their advances ran races. out from the the, the, the group deal, like yeah. I'm, I'm still, yeah. you know what I mean? So then it was like, that's when the, 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 the competition started. And that's when the, like, it was like the animosity started. And then, uh, and then him, you know, they little that little high school thing that was over because now we're professionals, we in the real world, we adults now, so that was over. And then like, and I'm working with her now, and like I'm the older one, and the with more, the bag, and we genuinely cool. And I'm like right, now, I called her five five brown eyes. She five seven. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> But I'm like, no. Nah, five, five seven doesn't. It, it doesn't, doesn't flow. It doesn't the same. translate. Yeah, yeah. Five so, five is a different type of that. Exactly. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. you know, sing this. Five five with brown eyes, now like the sunrise. And we spending more and more time together, and so quite naturally, and so that only just built more animosity and more drama. And then it was like, you know, and I was at an age and stage where, you know, I'm, this is post Omar. So I'm like, I'm Omar now. <laughs> I'm Omar now? <laughs> I'm the captain. <laughs> I'm just talking shit. Oh, oh, man. You know, it was just different times shit. then. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't use that as the excuse. That it was just different. Childhood trauma. No, you I don't. Can't, childhood trauma. I can't, no, 
You were out of pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you was out of pocket. I mean, it, 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 listen, it, it, but see pocket. that it, when you're sharing that kind of space and that kind of energy, that's different. And that's if and different. if and and this is the this is the big part that people don't understand. Okay, y'all are y'all are friends, right? Mm-hmm. It's my brother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But before y'all became brothers and y'all knew each other, mm-hmm. like did y'all immediately become brothers or were y'all working for a while? For, no, we just clicked. knew each no, other. Like, no, we clicked yeah. early. We okay. Clicked early, so. That ain't the case for everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sometimes it's like, all right, I know you, you know me. You know, you're not like yeah. that with everybody in the game, right? Yeah. No, for sure. Because yeah. you, so, you were in a group you didn't ultimately even want to be in in the beginning. Yeah. Right. No, right? Right. Circumstance put you so, in. And and even the whole plan was always like, nah, this was like during the making the band era. So it's mm-hmm. like, well, we'll just do like a making the band situation. Yeah. Y'all get together. Put them together. Put an album yeah. out yeah. and then everybody solo goes solo. Yeah. That yeah. was kind of like yeah. always the plan. They always promised that. Right. They never really was. Right. <laughs> and, and not for nothing, but it's like, if, if you sort of like beg me to be in this situ- this group with you, and then you we put the girl in the group, and I'm like, I don't really think this is a good idea. It's like, no, 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 it'll be fine, it'll be fine. And then you're out of pocket all the time because now you can't handle the pressure of being on the same team with somebody who's doing more. And so now you taking every opportunity to wow out whenever the fuck you want to and Eddie Kane whenever you want to. Yeah. That you, definitely. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, there's the definitely nothing you can build on that. Yeah. Like what, what yeah. the only reason I guess I was asking y'all cuz I'm like All right, y'all are brothers so it's, it's a little bit different. But even in a brother situation, imagine if one of y'all, let's if he was like out of pocket all the time mm-hmm. with his lady. And you like, bro, like, yo man, oh, fuck that nigga. Fuck that nigga and fuck you too. Take cuz th- 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 how how many times do you put up with that? Before you say, <laughs> I'm just saying you don't have to deal with that no more. I'm just saying, like, I mean, nah, nigga, because da da da, and this, you know, nigga drinking every day and like not coming to the good. studio and like. I'm the one writing all the songs. <laughs> Watch my chair swivel. Eventually, just, the chair swivels. Eventually, the chair swivels. But it wasn't even honestly. It wasn't no, it was, even it was really. A joke, yeah. But. It's just one of them things. And I've been dealing with it for so many years. Yeah. And people, so it's kind of like, well, 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 what do you want to do? Like, what, 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 what am I supposed to do? What, you, what, what's supposed to happen? Like, I think you did what. If you was, was already being, it's, like, it's like, if I done had countless conversations with you, if I'm like, bro, like, you, you, you doing too much, my nigga. Y'all met when she was 16 years old. The group popped off, like, when she was like 17. 18 years old, like, what, you're wilding, my nigga. You don't treat no little girl like that. You blacking out on her at parties, cussing around in front of everybody, you getting drunk. The nigga was a cold piece of work way before the group. Hmm. Don't let the intervention show fool you. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, like, wow. Yeah. And that's the part that I would always save and just be like, you know what, I'll just take the scarlet letter. I'll be the bad guy. It's fine. I ain't going to, sure. you know what I'm saying? But, like, that's just the fact of the matter. Like, you're doing too much, bro. And I'm just not that, I ain't going to be, I wasn't raised like that. I got five older brothers, my nigga. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm raised in a whole nother culture. So me and you, we different. And I'm just like, and if we, and if you can't handle the pressure, just say you can't handle the pressure, nigga. <laughs> like, yeah. damn, bro, you like, you outshining me. And it's like, nah, fuck that. Fuck that nigga. Like you, you talking to me like I wasn't already doing, like I wasn't already working before I even met you. Like you acting like I need, I don't, we don't, I don't need this clearly, right? So it was just that, and I tried to just stay as cool and as friendly as possible. And then after a while, it just gets to a point where, I mean, you leaving her at the studio, we at Clef Studio in East Orange, like that's the hood, bro. Like, and you bouncing and driving and leaving. Fuck that ride home with Ryan. How many nights is she gonna ride? My mama told me. My, you know what my mama used to say? Don't mix your homeboys and your girlfriend. You keep them separate. Hmm. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? Because 
human beings are sh just human beings. Yeah. And the more you get to mixing in, the more they start yeah. to feel a little too comfortable around each other. You understand mm -hmm, what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Things can happen. Feelings can occur. You understand right. what I mean? Right. Especially if you out of pocket. Yeah. Any woman is going to start leaning on your bro. I don't know why yeah. he keep acting the like shoulder. that. And, then, and you just like, yeah, it's, you know, it's cool. No, but it, I'll talk to him. I don't know why. He can't be more like you. And, and we in the studio all the time. And we making hit records together. And I'm older and like more mature. Oh. How many, I mean, what am I supposed to do? What was supposed to happen? So, and y'all don't, I mean, I didn't take her. You, you let her go. Dropped your dime. And I, I mean, I, I honestly, I, 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 I don't regret it. We had a beautiful life together. I married her. I fell in love. Like it ain't like a right one and done. Her yeah. smuttered her out. Like yeah. nah, bro. Yeah. Like we was young. We was traveling the world. We was having this experience. And bro was in a space in his life where he was just on his. He was on his Eddie Kane, my nigga. <laughs> it's like, mm. and so, I mean, we was all wilding and having fun being young, you know, rock and roll life, but it's like he, his was like a lot different. Mm -hmm. So after a while, it just kind of just happened that the more time she and I spent together and you know what I mean? It was organic and it happened. And I mean, I apologize for it. Me and him done fought backstage about it. We done, you know, broed up and bro cried together about it. Like we done did all that already. Mm -hmm. So I don't have no regrets. She and I had a beautiful family, two beautiful kids. Like we're still good friends. Like, so, but you know, it just is what it is. And especially back then, I was at a I was at a space in my life where, you know, I was I was kind of on one too in that regard. Like, you're not just going like keep disrespecting me like that bro yeah and and like not showing up to the studio so just me and her at the studio so the second album never happened mm. it just got to a point where it's like well we can't keep doing this you mm -hmm. know what i mean and then if 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 me and her was gonna be together and like it's like let's just it just is what it is it was just one of those situations so um and then it was funny because then years later <clears throat> he's on tv telling like this whole other story like like they was like just these happy lovebirds and like I just came in and did like nigga that ain't what happened. Tell them about the all the Ike Turner shit and all the Eddie Kane shit. Tell them about all that other shit, my nigga. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's all good. Nah, the album never happened. She didn't want to do it no more. She was pregnant with our first son, and uh, and at that point it was like all right, well I'm riding with my shorty. So yeah. and then it was like you know the group was over. Pretty much. Um, and then, uh, like I said, me and Dre had reconnected. Y'all moved back. So y'all moved to Philly? No, no, no. I lived in Miami at the time. Mm -hmm. But we were recording the second album in New York. Okay. With, okay. Yeah. And we were recording the second album in New York. And then also, too, like the second album wasn't really sounding like we, you know, like there was, there was something, there was something organic to the, the music that, Robbie and I was creating together because Robbie's he's a great producer, musician, yeah. and everything. You know when he's focused. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like and so we was cooking up like like he produced. What would you do? You know mm. what I mean? Oh, wow, I don't know that. Yeah. Okay. Wyclef and Wyc <laughs> Wyclef and them told us like nah, but uh, you should put my name on the, as producer because so the DJs will play it. And we was like oh, okay. I was like, but you can't you can't take my publisher though. He's like no 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 no. You keep your publisher. But so then I learned a valuable lesson about credit. Credit. Yeah. Credit is everything. Yeah. He like, no, you can keep the publishing. You need the credit. You know what I mean? So he's like, all right. He was like, plus, you know, like Funk Flex and all these DJs in New York, they'll respect it more if we walking in there with a record that say produced by Wyclef. But in, in actuality- I'm about to say. Yeah. He me was and, right. Yeah. Yeah. Me, right. But me and Robbie produced that. We did that record in his bedroom. Me and Robbie did that. And Robbie's he's super talented, but just it just, things got unfocused. Yeah. And so that was that. And uh, and uh, you know what's funny? That was the reason why I didn't want to like I don't want to be in a group with a nigga and his girlfriend because then if anything happened with them and then now I'm in the middle and, and oh, it was yeah. like it, it's almost like it played out exactly, exactly how you thought it would exactly how I thought it would you know what I mean 
good, bad, whatever, and different. It's a part of the story. It is what it is. But mm-hmm. everybody's okay now. Everybody's happy and healthy now, and it's all good. But um, yeah. So the album wasn't. So we when we were going in to record the second album. At that point, like Robbie wasn't even coming to the studio like that no more. You know what I mean? Um, and he started making money. He had his own little crew of friends. You know what I mean? I I was living in Miami. Like I had my own little crew. Of friends. Now we, you know, it was like that new edition shit. Like exactly, you know what I mean? Yeah. We went from all riding in the same bus together. Mm-hmm. Now we got six different buses. Like you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. It was kind of like your classic group split after success story. And then uh, it was during that time, Dre and I reconnected because there was a time where, you know, I was off doing City High and they Mm -hmm. were off being Mm -hmm. Dre and Vidal. So we had lost contact for a while. And when we reconnected, Dre was like, yo, man, I I got this new crib, you know, 23rd and Walnut, got this loft, man, come link, let's just link up how we used to. When we were just like, you know what I mean? Just get up, just me and you, bro, let's link up like we used to. So I go and he was like, come stay at the crib. So I go stay at his house in 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 Philly. And literally the first night, he's showing me the crib and then he's showing me the studio. And then he start fucking with the ASR and banging, hitting sound, bing, bong, bong, ding, dong, different samples. And then he hit. Then he start going through other sounds. I'm like, no, 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 go back. I was like, no, 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 go back to that one. Which one? This one here. I was like, that's it right there, bro. He like, you sure? I got, I got more shit though. I got, yeah, you know. Yeah. Nah, that one. He's like, all right. Looped it up, cooked up a little beat to it, and uh, he gave me the gave me the. I had a he had this little eight track digital recorder, only had like eight faders on it. This was you know pre Pro Tools and all yeah. that whatever. So. I went up there. I went up in the loft. He had this cool little loft space in the in this apartment. Went up there with that eight disc, eight track recorder and a, a handheld shore. Oh, no. oh so that, that's, that's on your demo. Yeah, the superstar challenge is on your demo. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Levels. Yeah, I heard your stuff, man. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Touche. Yeah, no. Touche. Yeah. My go. brother. Yeah, yeah. Heard your stuff. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So I said did the did the reference right there at Dre's crib. Dre was and Dre said, yo, this would be fire for Usher. He said that. And um I was like, you think so? He's like, yeah. He said, LA Reed been fucking with us, you know, mm-hmm. fucking with me and Vidal. He was like, this will be crazy for Usher. And funny thing is, this was in between 8701. Usher was kind of quiet at the yes. moment. Mm-hmm. And yes. Justin Timberlake was going, mm-hmm. was, you know what I mean? Going crazy. Yeah. Going crazy. And um, so I was even thinking, I was like, Usher, you sure? Like, just, you know, because Usher was quiet at the moment. He was like, nah, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. All right, bro, cool. You know, he sends it to L.A. Reid, I guess, however that worked out. And about two weeks later, he's like, yo, L.A. Reid want to fly us to Atlanta. And uh, we got to Atlanta. Usher was not fucking with us, boy. That was no, funny. No. Nah. Usher wasn't fucking with us for like a good week. Like it took us a minute to win him over. Because he ain't know us. He's like, who these niggas? You know what I mean? And um, I think he was He was also, I think he told me, he told me later on, he was like, he just was like in a space where, you know, you got Justin Timberlake cracking off, kind of like doing his shit. You feel mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And he's getting all this like I remember Justin had the cover of Rolling Stone. I think it said uh, the new king of pop. No, nah, he was cooking. He was cooking. You he's feel cooking. what I mean? And, and, and so, you know, Usher was like, what? Like <laughs> like Yeah, the competition. Like all this work I've been in. putting yeah. in and he come he like, man, like, come on man. Like all the dancing and all the you know what yeah. I mean? Like he like, nigga, like, you know? So Usher was feeling some type of way and he just was in this space. He was a little standoffish and um, it took us a minute to uh, get him to warm up to us, but he finally warmed up to us. He didn't like Caught Up at all. He didn't like that record at all. <clears throat> he didn't like Caught Up? No. He didn't like that song at all. At all. Jeez. That's crazy. He's, he's like, I mean, it's cool. I don't know. Caught Up. like That was like Philly slang at that time. Nobody uh-huh. even talked like that. That was like some Philly shit. Like, oh, she got you caught up. nigga. She got you caught up. He's like, we don't talk like that in the A. Y'all don't talk like that. 
So it was the, we kept playing it for him, working on it a little more, playing it because he cut he cut Superstar, and then you know we was like, all right, we're gonna do some more. And then he was like, um, he was like, man, I need something I could dance to. And then he left. He left the studio. So me, Dre, uh, Vidal, and Pooh Bear, we all put our heads together and was like, we need to get on something with some tempo, like some Michael Jackson shit, like three changes, like versus one thing, yeah. pre, and then the hook goes somewhere, you know what yeah, I mean? Three yeah. distinct movements, uh -huh. you know? And uh, we cooked the song up, wrote it, I referenced it, and uh, he came back, heard it, he's like, I don't know, I don't know. He was hard, man. He, he was not, he wasn't fucking with it. It took us a minute. We took us a minute. We kept playing it over and over again. Uh, I remember Mark Pitts was <laughs> Mark Pitts pulled me outside the room in the hallway at the studio. I was like, "Nigga, you know something I learned from Puffy?" He was like, "Nigga, I learned this is show business, nigga." He was like, "And the show don't start when you hit the stage. Like the show start now." He's like, "Man, if that was Pete Diddy in that room right now." He'll be standing on the SSL, yeah, pouring champagne on Usher right. head. <laughs> talk, talk about Playboy. You ain't fucking with this Playboy. Yeah. You ain't yeah. fucking with this Playboy. Right. You, ain't with this. Right. you yeah. crazy Playboy. This shit right here, nigga. Oh, yeah. You ain't trying to get money. You ain't trying, you ain't to, get trying money. to get money. <laughs> so Mark was like, man, I don't care what you need to do. If you need to I order some bottles, call some mention, get yeah. some weed, whatever you need to do, nigga, Selling you need record. to sell this record. Wow. Wow. Shout was, out to Mark Pitts. Man, come on, man. Yeah, Mark gave me the game song. Because that's like, great a and It's great a Absolutely. He knew his artists needed this record. Yeah. yeah. This was a part of a body of work they yeah. were putting together. Absolutely. Because that record, it fits perfectly on there. Yeah. It was going to be and the first And it's a standout single. type it's of record, record, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it does, it fits on there, but it doesn't sound like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same way, yeah, yeah. is on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Those are the two records that kind of stick out mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. on that confession. To me. Yeah. Caught Up was going to be, if I'm not mistaken, the first single. And then Yeah was like that late, you know, Yeah came along and just. Phew. Yeah. Yeah. Because Lil John, you know, he, he leaked that shit. But uh, Caught Up was like that strong contender for that first single. Mm -hmm. And when, when, we, when we met Usher, it was early in the album making process too. So mm -hmm. there wasn't like, there was like an album, which is another reason probably, you know, in all fairness, why he wasn't all cozied up to us like that. It's like we starting the album fresh. It's not like he was 10, 20 songs yeah, into in. Into a rhythm. And then, knew exactly and then what hear it was some, on. Yeah, 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 you know, and we yeah. just kind of came in to add. We was like- like Kicking it off. Kicking it off. Yeah. Like Superstar and all the records we were doing were like the first ones. So he was kind of like, wait, who are these guys? Where's Jermaine? Like, what are we, what's going on? <laughs> like, yeah. what are we doing? You know what I mean? But he he did cozy up to us. We got super cool. Um, that's my brother. Like, and and then when he finally did record, when he got in the booth and he started cutting, uh, he started cutting caught up, and he started hearing how he was sounding on that bitch. Oh, he's cooking on there. Then it was like he didn't want to come out the booth. Nah, let me let me let me try one more time. Let me get this. Uh, so uh, he's like, what the. Yeah. He like, no, nah, yeah. let me get it one more time. No, yeah. no, 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 no. He really singing on it up to No, he's going crazy. He went crazy. singing on yeah. it. And then we throwing, me and Pooh Bear throwing ad libs at him, throwing this at him, throwing that. Try this, try that, do this, do that, do that. And he, you know, he taking what we do and he take it to another level. Yeah. And then we it was came, like, we then it was that over synergy. the fact that it's you and Pooh Bear. Listen, Pooh Bear was 22 years Shh. old. I remember that Pooh Bear. Yeah, I remember that Pooh Bear. Man. Monster. Cook. Monster. You know what's so funny? You know what's yeah. crazy? When I hear Bieber, mm -hmm. I just hear Pooh Bear. Jason Boyd. Like, yeah. That's the that is him. Yes. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Like that boy been doing that vibe, that flavor, that sauce, mm -hmm. nigga, since forever yeah. ago. 20 yeah. years ago, he yeah. was on that. And I that made me feel so good. Like, cause you know. It ain't nothing like getting in with an artist that just trusts you and they just gonna, they just gonna let you dress them. That's hard. That's hard. So it's when you rare. find that it's hard and it's rare. It's hard and it's, especially the artists that got the chops. Yeah. To to take what you give them and and execute. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's when that synergy finally did happen with us and Usher, and clearly he got the chops, you seen what happened. Mm -hmm. 20 million. You know what I mean? Sheesh. That Will Smith album sold 20 million too, by the way. I just had to throw that out there. So I've been on two albums that double diamond. 
Double How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I heard your stuff. I heard, I heard your stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do a publishing deal at this point? Man, shit. Shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, the, the, break, first, the, the first break time, no, the pull up. Yeah. first time, no. Second time, yeah. So I, I, one album was without, one album was with. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sheesh. Yeah, but that was that was that was a lot life of was good. Your money, brother. I've been around. That continues around. to circulate. Oh, yeah. It's gonna circulate. I've been really blessed. Still, really blessed. Really, really blessed. And you know, shout out to all the artists that gave me that opportunity and the producers and. I made great friends, and so it's just been like a hell of a ride, like a super duper hell of a ride. And to still be real like close with people, and me and Usher talk all the time, and it's just like it's a blessing, you know. I'm just I'm like, what does that feel like now? Because you're like, we're not, we can't say that you are um, a person that used to do anything. Like you still. He told do me this. he's retired. What? <laughs> hey, so that's what he told me, man. Off camera, he said he's I'm, retired, man. I'm, I don't I'm, know what's I'm, going I'm, on. I'm f so I'm feeling like, and tell me, y'all can help me. We we all about the same age, right? Mm -hmm. I'm kind of retired so, too, though. So yeah, it's like I'm I, I'm, I'm feeling back like bitches. like I'm feeling like <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Do, you tell me. Like, do you do you do you walk away and? Do you ever often ask yourself, like, man, is there something else, or am I just supposed to like no, do you this, just, you know, you forever? Just, or you just you just do something else as yeah. well as well is what as what I'm learning as well as mm. yeah because this is forever, and yeah. at this point, like the way you've established mm -hmm. yourself, like at the, it's only for the love for you, and yeah. I think that's the best place to really be creative from. Yeah, it's just for the love, and now your adventures at this point yeah. are just the desires of your heart, right? You know what I'm saying, yeah. and finding spaces that challenge you a little more, or yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah. things that just seem a little bit interesting because you've been doing this for so long. I got this. Yeah, this mm -hmm. bag is easy. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but yeah. what's what's that? Yeah. yeah. Now it's just now it's now it's feeding the curiosity of your creativity, mm. which you do as well, right? Mm. Because yeah, as well right. as well because. Like your your vibrations, mm -hmm. your elements, you're necessary. Mm. Yeah. Still. Yeah. And I just look mm. at it as Thank you. Wow. for me personally, just doing what you want to do. Mm. Right. That is the greater part of having success in whatever space in this business, which is not easy. We yeah. all know that. It's not easy to have success in this business. But once you do, being able to do it how and when you want to do it. Right. People would always ask me, when are you going to put out an album? When, you, when I feel like it. Right, right, right. When right. I feel like it. Right. And however I choose to do it. Mm -hmm. right. The other night was probably the first night I wrote a song with someone in a long time. We end up at Chris Brown's house, mm -hmm. and he looks at me in Tank, and he's like, I need help with this one. Mm -hmm. Y'all mm -hmm. help me finish this record. Mm -hmm. And just even being, I don't go to the studio, I don't shoot lyrics here back and forth and do the whole thing. Like, melodies and... Just not what I have to do anymore. Mm -hmm. The shit was fun. And we in there with our little brother, and it's like, it wasn't like we just, oh, nigga, you need us on this. No, he was like, hey, hey, bro, yeah, help me finish this. Yeah. And that's the space, ultimately, in my opinion, that's that we all want to get to. Space the to beautiful space from. of, yeah. I don't have to. He don't yeah. need me. It's not like I had to, oh, shit, let me wait for him to tell, ask. Yeah, I, yeah, just, so I can try to give me some publishing. Right. No. This is my guy. Right. And we just vibing. Mm -hmm. And this fucking song is incredible that he's mm -hmm. already started. Mm -hmm. We just do what we want to do at this point. Yeah. But the retirement side of it, I don't, you know, and I used to always say I was retired from whatever, you know, as a joke. But I just look at it like in this shit, we don't have to because a magician can always make magic, right? Right. Always. Yeah. Maybe, well, maybe, maybe it's like retiring from a certain mindset, that mm -hmm. chase, that the running chase. gun, yeah, the, yeah. the chase, yeah, yeah, yeah. the thirst, the, oh, I'm 100%. trying to get, you know, because there was a certain, 
there was a freedom. You could probably attest to this. When you first discover music, you don't know nothing. So it's just all creativity. It's mm -hmm. all discovery. It's all exploration. You're falling in love with this new thing called music and studio mm -hmm. sessions. And what does this even mean? And uh, crafting songs and whatever. Yeah. Then you start having success. And then there's a love and there's a freedom because it's like, oh, shit. I'm making money. Like I can make money. I can do this and make money. And then that's fun for a little while. Then you reach like a plateau of success where success is normal. And then it becomes about, can you do it again? And hmm. you need to write us another this. And when you going to make us another, you know, sex, love and pain, like when you going to make, can mm -hmm. you do it again? Can you do it right, again? Right, be, what right. you, what you done lately? What you done lately? And then, it, then I'm like, look, then you're getting older, obviously. You may have kids, may, you know what I mean? So now you're shifting into this other part of your life where you don't necessarily have, like, you, you your drive has changed. And then now you're trying to rediscover the love again. Because then in business and politics, you might have gone through mm -hmm. different deals, different little situations. Mm -hmm. And then it's just kind of like, ah, oh, man, like, what is this shit really about? Then also, too, the game changes. Mm -hmm. Faces get younger. You start not to recognize people when you walk in the room. I never forget when I like realized I was the oldest guy in the room. Shit, like when the fuck did that happen? Niggas start calling you Big Bro and OG, and you like when did I'm, that happen? I'm Unk, I'm, I'm, Unk. OG. <laughs> I love, I love Legend. all that shit. Like, to me, that shit is hilarious. I just, I just like to accept it. But you know, I'm gonna tell you other, another another piece to it too, is that you know early in your years, you're you know you're the twenty song a day guy because. Yeah. You know, first of all, it's fun, but two, you're also searching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so with that success, what you find is the confidence in believing that I know how to do this mm -hmm. and right. I know how to dial it up mm -hmm. when I need it. Mm -hmm. Always, always, I'm always reminded of a Teddy Bishop who would come to the studio mm -hmm. for you know, his four hour block in the studio when it was time for him to have the room. Mm -hmm. He would come in with his briefcase and his lunch and briefcase and throw his disc in and brought his, his business. And when he was done, he would put that down. It's like, where you, Teddy, where you, where you going? We're just getting it. Yeah, I'm, I'm done, man. Go home, have some dinner mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. you know, hang out with my girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See y'all tomorrow. See y'all tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. So now it's not. It's not guessing. He doesn't need 20 songs to figure it out anymore. Right. right. He can enjoy life. Right. And this thing is a real career. As a this pro. Is, as a pro. As a pro. You know, mm -hmm. when it's time to hit the big shot, mm -hmm. he can come right on in within that four hour span mm -hmm. and knock that big knock that big shot down for you. Mm -hmm. And God bless you. Have a good night. <laughs> right. And yeah. so as we yeah. as we see ourselves as elders in this shit, we're very sure. Yeah. About how this works. Do you ever feel do unsure do. In, in your elder statesmanship? Do you ever? No. No? Nah? No. It's just more like even more sure. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Right. Yeah. I'm like, listen, right. you either fuck with it or you don't. Like right. music yeah. is subjective. I learned that really young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That music is subjective. There are going to be people who don't like Superstar, which mm -hmm. is insane to me. Right. 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 If you tell me you don't like that and you don't right. know that first run in the song, mm -hmm. like, but, right. but it, it's just a natural thing. Some people yeah. are going to be like, I, eh, don't really do nothing for me. Yeah. It's subjective. Cool. Yeah. Everybody find didn't the, like Michael Jackson. Not find everybody. The, and the and the key, mm -hmm. a big key in this shit is find the find the people who fuck with you. Yeah. And that's who you fuck with. And that's mm -hmm. who you fuck with. Mm hmm Let them bring more people to the party. Right. You gotta come with me to see this. Yeah. Because right. yeah. <laughs> that word of mouth is a motherfucker. Yeah. Right, right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where you know, and somebody's FOMO that they don't know about mm -hmm. it. They don't know about mm -hmm. it. Wait, wait, I don't know about it. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> so so to answer your question, bro, right. I, I just look at it like, hey man, you don't like that one, that's cool. You're right. Yeah. Maybe you're gonna like maybe, something else, or maybe not. Maybe you'll never like me. Maybe yeah. you'll never like me. Yeah. I got I got to that space and like that's so that's why I started using the word like retired, just maybe for lack of a better word. It's like retired from everything opposite of what you just said. Mm -hmm. in, in it's like now I'm more in a space where I pull up to what I wanna pull up to. And usually right. when I'm pulling up, it's probably because my my friends are there. Right. So and so's pretty. Oh yeah, yeah, that's mm. my nigga. Why? Yeah, like, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So and so's it's, the it's, man. So and so's the man. It's, it's gonna be a good time. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna laugh. Yeah. We're gonna hang out. And then, oh yeah, and by the way, we made something cool. Yeah. You know that's what I mean? It. But it's ways. It's more fun. 
um, and or or you pulling up to something where it's like you're genuinely interested. Like wow, like she, this artist got something different going right. on. Or, wow, she's from Taiwan. Like yeah. wow, I want to yeah. learn about. I want to yep. go to Taiwan. Yeah. Like yeah. so, I'm more. I'm asking. You know what I mean? And I want to yeah. go sit with this artist and learn where they're from. And then now it's a new, like you said, a new um, discovery to see. Can I? Can I write something for this? Right. This Asian artist. Like can I? You know, yeah. give them the. You know yeah. what I mean? And the and sauce. It's, yeah, the sauce. You know. So yeah, I'm. So that's why I guess I use the word retired from the scramble because yeah. there was a I time in my, sure. there was a stretch where it was like a scramble yeah and it was i was feeling the stress of like the scrambling to like oh you know what i mean yeah but i tell you like yeah, i told you know mike city so mike city we cussed him out when he left there's no way that the information that you have it's and needed. the gift that you have it's needed should not be yeah mm -hmm. it's on needed display and you're needed use. yeah yeah. In some way, shape. Yeah. People need to know. People need to understand or at least be under the tutelage mm -hmm. of a motherfucker who's been double diamond twice. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga. I haven't. All right. <laughs> All right. I got I bought my girl some diamonds. <laughs> <That> shit. <laughs> I bought my girl. I got a couple in my chain. Yeah. <laughs> couple in my chain. <laughs> Hey, no real, hey, real uh, shit, bro. Right. Like real that shit. energy and conversation yeah. is necessary. Where you Hell walking around, yeah. like, oh shit, that's the nigga. That, yeah, sit down. Yeah, because yeah. if they did know, when they see this podcast, they gonna you got your new right. name is Double Diamond, yeah. baby. Hey, hey, Double Diamond, hi. Yeah. Yeah. Double Diamond yeah. this motherfucker. Yeah. Double D, nigga. He he we ain't talking stuff. about the Chi Chi's, nigga. <laughs> he, he heard your stuff. He heard your stuff. We need that T shirt. We need that T shirt. I heard your stuff. I heard your stuff. Oh my God. With the chair on yeah, the back. Yeah, yeah. With the chair on it. I heard your stuff. Yeah, it's just it's Send just me, oh, it's just so necessary because yeah. the information has to come from it has to come from the people that did it. That did it. Yeah. The people that do it. Yeah. yeah. Somebody can talk yeah. about you. Yeah. Somebody can, you know, throw out stories about you. Yeah. Somebody yeah. can say how good you are. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Oh, you got me. If you were ever in the studio with that nigga, if that never ever ever dropped some game on you, no. Yeah. 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 It's it's part of the obligation, in my opinion, I, for yeah. us to give. That's our like this is a give back. This absolutely is. Like absolutely. everybody like, oh, you know the podcast shit nigga is cracking. No, no, no. This is a labor of love for for Tank and I. You know, I what I want, and I, just to give y'all y'all flowers real quick, and why I was so super excited and honored to come on, because from when I first saw y'all were doing it, it was like at first I'm thinking like, okay, niggas just figured out another lick. You right, feel what I'm saying? Right, and right. good on you. You feel me? Oh, like, damn, these niggas went to college. Yeah, ain't damn, they went to college. But then, but then, when I watched, when I started watching, mm -hmm. it was like. Oh no, nah, this this ain't like just a lick. Like these, this is real. This is real love. This is real passion. It's the same energy yes. mm -hmm. as when he play or when niggas write. The same love. The mm -hmm. same like when people pull up to the show and you want to give them something to take with them yeah. when they go home. Yes. You feel what I mean? Yes. When I watched the show, that's how I felt. It was education. It was good stories. It wasn't messy. It wasn't yeah. gimmicky. It yeah. wasn't like y'all was just trying to go for some clickbait. Mm. It was like, it was real. It was so real, and I respected it so much. And I and it, I'm not gonna lie, watching y'all actually spark that thing back up and like yeah yeah you're supposed to be like yeah. yeah yeah you're not supposed to like fade away hit him with the shoulders nah you gotta yeah, come hit yeah. him back with the yeah, yeah that's little like, Duval would say like, let's hit him with the shoulders let him know you know yeah. you know cause remember in the beginning of the show today I asked you I was like how, I often I struggled with knowing when do you press in right and when do you just stay back and just kinda like be humble and when do you like come back to your mind mm -hmm. you know so you open it up, you know, R&B money, the number one, like, let yeah, money, yeah, number, authority. authority. Yeah. Like, no. Authority. And run the stats if you yeah. question no, no, me. I, I, <laughs> I, I, read, I read one of the comments one day, because they had some, you know, some shit to say about, you know, yeah. the way I go about things here mm -hmm. and there. And, uh, and, and a nigga said something in the context of, this nigga ain't LA and babyface. Mm. And I thought to myself... But yeah, I've sold a hundred million but, records but, as a but, songwriter. But they aren't. You know what I'm but saying? They like, are. like do, the, <laughs> like do, like do the math. Like, yeah, 
the math, the math, it math. math. It's math. It's math. It's math. It's math. It's math. It's math. You know Facts, what I'm saying? And yeah. yes, no, I am yeah. not. And those guys are amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am me. You are you. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that we grew up watching those icon juggernauts like Face, L.A. and 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 Jimmy Jam and them, and you know, it isn't it a little surreal? Like, are, are like. Are, are we that now? Is that <laughs> we're in the space? Is that what the young people I know we are was, saying? About? I know we were always striving. Is that what, right. is that what the young people like? You know, everybody about, strive to be Jordan, right. but and you we, never Jordan. You, but then you might get to a point where it's like, but I am, I am. We're rubbing you know shoulders. I mean? we're rubbing shoulders. Yeah. They've done things that are amazing right. yeah. that they've done, and right. we've done things that are amazing that we've done. Yeah. And when we all right. come together. It's, we yeah. kicked the shit. Yes. When Babyface sitting in yeah. that same chair, yeah. same respect for us that we got for him, which yeah. is crazy to right, me. Right, yeah. right, right. It's absolutely right. insane that my right. favorite of all time is right. like, right. no, you don't. And I'm like, shit. That he's hurt your stuff. And he's hurt my stuff. He's hurt your stuff. Because <laughs> he's hurt my stuff. He hurt your stuff. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I wrote songs with that man. He wrote he's hurt songs my stuff. With it. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. incredible, bro. Incredible. And sometimes yeah, the outside wow. doesn't understand because they think that what one has done is so much greater than the other. But there's no way that LeBron James is going home thinking about what Michael Jordan did. It's just right. like, no, this is what I do. Just or Allen Iverson. It would, it would be such or, a disservice you know to I mean? LeBron like, if yeah. he if he carried that. It's no, like I'm that sure you he doesn't. Are a whole you do you like, and in this music you know? business we shouldn't carry that yeah. mm. like we have our competitive times right 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 where you're going against this writer or that writer and you're mm -hmm. like oh shit that nigga on his shit mm -hmm. man i gotta yeah. da, 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 i gotta get to my shit but the truth of the matter is that bro we're just all doing great things yeah legally yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah, especially yeah. from where we all come from yeah yeah like we get to do this for a living we get to do mm -hmm. it legally and we get to bring joy to people out of it mm -hmm. man i don't give a shit what nobody said mm -hmm. nigga i made it yeah uh, right how about that and been at it for a long time long time been you making. made it you made mm -hmm. it these guys have made it we've done things that mm -hmm. people pray and wish to do and i am extremely grateful mm -hmm. and proud of myself mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> As you should bro, be. be proud of yeah, yourself, bro. Down. Like, absolutely. Fuck I'm right. not absolutely. hearing none of that. <laughs> I'm not hearing I hear nothing none of that, that bro. Other than double diamond talk. Double, double diamond, diamond talk, talk, bro. That's Yo. all I want to hear from you is double diamond man. talk from now on. I've invisibly popped his collar, <laughs> <You> know, man, <laughs> from over here. <laughs> oh man, I love it. For real, bro. It. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. You, Thank For you. Real. I appreciate it. Yeah. Congratulations to y'all too. So, man. young man, in your in your in your army travels, mm -hmm. um, in your pursuit mm. to to double diamonds. <laughs> to be prince. To be prince. <laughs> uh, to liking the the women folk. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's all the, the mm -hmm. thug Listen, lifestyle. That is, that is the motivation to this thing, man. Mm -hmm. Like the money is cool. We don't get into this thing for the money, not R&B. No, no, no. We get into this R&B thing for the woman. That started, man. That started young. That yeah. started early. I heard you sing. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> they tell you they heard your stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where you going with it, Playboy? Yeah, I'm about to pour that champagne that Puffles, that imaginary champagne that Puffles pouring in the studio. Top five, yeah. <laughs> Your top five, mm. top five. <laughs> Your top five R and B singer, Ooh. yeah. R and B songs, oh, yeah. R and B you've written some of. You got some, you got some. I know you got a top five. Top five. Your top five. Ryan Toby. Yes, sir. Let me lean in. Your top five mm -hmm. R&B artists. Artists, singers, artists. all the same. 
all the same. Well, I'm I'm gonna do it based off of. This isn't a better than le- or lesser than. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go. How they came into my life. Hmm. Cause I feel like even this many years later, I still rate them like how I met them or how I got introduced to them. Hmm. You know what I mean? For some reason, even though I've learned more, I don't, you know? So I would have to say, Michael Jackson and Prince are at the top. Is that one and two or one and one? I used to wish that Michael Jackson played Mm -hmm. an instrument. And I used to wish that Prince could dance like Michael. Mm. It kind of evens them out though. Mm. It does. To a certain degree. You know what I mean? That was my, I was like, dang, I wish I could like, I used to draw, I used to get in trouble for doodling, drawing pictures of these niggas. Like that was my doodle was like. Prince and Michael Jackson. Prince and Michael Jackson, mm. drawing pictures of Prince and Michael Jackson. Nice. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I just didn't understand that. These niggas, you know, that whole androgyny thing, these niggas, like, I, I ain't never seen nobody that pretty where I live. How the fuck do men, you, I, you can look like that? Yeah. And jump on a motorcycle with a guitar on your back and a and bad a, chick and, a bra? and peel off. Shit. And then Michael like spin around and yeah. uh, magic. You know, yeah, this is the dawn yeah, of music yeah, videos yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So And Mike told us about baby mamas that wasn't your baby mama. You know Girl, what you I mean? hear me? Like huh? that went over a lot of people's heads. Exactly. Billy Jean. It's not my lover. It wasn't yeah. his, yeah. man. She yeah. said that I'm the one. Yeah. It was a hit. It's not my son. We were singing yeah. that as if that was a children's song, man. <laughs> exactly. It's not my goddamn son. It's not, <laughs> not my son. My goddamn son. <laughs> but in the video, he crawled in the bed with her. I mean, he's not saying he didn't do stuff. He said he knock her down. He didn't say he it. He said somebody else probably did he too. He said there was some relations involved. <laughs> I pulled out. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> no, actually, he vanished. <laughs> that nigga, actually, that nigga, remember the, the blanket when the detective came up there and the blanket, Mike lit the bed up and then that nigga did what he probably popped it real quick and, and nigga, then that nigga was like, <laughs> nigga disappeared. That nigga evaporated. Okay. <laughs> so it's not mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I evaporate. How can it, how can it be mine? <laughs> Can't have no kids if you evaporate. Right, man. Evaporate. Fuck, bro. We go together. Yeah, okay, so, so one and one is Mike and Prince or one and so two? That, that's a strong... But I'm going to put Prince at the top of my list. Go ahead. Okay. Because he just influenced... I Just stylistically, vocally, I learned how to sing. Prince taught me how to sing. Beautiful. Early. Um... Then I'm going to, obviously, MJ, number three. As I got older, I started getting introduced to, like, Lauren Hill really put me up on Stevie Wonder. Mm. Like, deep cut Stevie. You yeah. know what I mean? So, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. I feel like Steve, I discovered Stevie and Donnie Hathaway at the same time. Mm. So, they, they, they hold... Uh, um, similar position for me yeah. a little bit. Um, then number four, number four has to be like. So you just turned three into Stevie Donnie. Did I do that? Stevie Hathaway. Stevie, Stevie Hathaway? Hathaway. Yeah. Did I do that? Okay, okay it's fine. It's just, fine. Just so can thing. I go number one? Is no, 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 Prince no, no, Rogers you, Jackson? You double diamond, brother. You do <laughs> Prince you Rogers double, Jackson. Double, then we're gonna go with Stevie diamond, Hathaway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then we're gonna go with um, artists. Oh, we can do groups too. Whatever you want. Singers, yeah, whatever. Listen, listen, listen. It's your it's list. Fun. I don't want to say. This particular artist, because I think I'll save that for the Voltron section. Okay. Can okay. I, okay. okay. Um, you did your homework. All right. Top five. Top five. There's some new artists that that need to be in there too. Yeah, you gonna throw some new ones? I love that. I think. I Come think on. <clears throat> because I, as far as like the legends go, those four, as far as how they affected me. Michael Prince, Stevie, Donnie is like, yeah. That's like, yeah. So I, I'm gonna just do four, and then the fifth one. I'm thinking about the females. I 
I'm gonna I'm throw Lauren Hill as number five. Why not? I'm not gonna argue with you. Why not? She can sing her ass off I'm and no, no. bar bar you up. I'm gonna fight you on that. I don't know what's yeah. I don't really know who one of one. Mm-hmm. Right, it's fine. It's fine with me. Especially young Lauren. Like yeah. Lauren can be on the top <clears throat> of the R and B somebody's R and B list and their rap yeah. list. Yeah. She yeah. does both. She does at both. the highest level. At she the highest, did. highest level. She yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm rolling. All right, your top five. Yeah. R&B songs. <clears throat> Can they be gospel too, or yeah, just R&B? Come on now. Okay. Where we come from? Right. Of course. Wow. So you, you know what? You when we talk about that, just said we left me all the way out. Huh? No, nah, don't worry, bro. Oh. We were sharing a moment. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it's because like it. of what I said earlier about the Eddie Kane record, man. Yeah, That's yeah. all. It's just threw me out. I'm going to get you some gospel CDs. <laughs> so, so you can come on They don't listen to CDs no more. You'll find your CD player. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my spaceship, baby. Hey, right, listen. I'm going to get you all the commissions. It's a line up in your spaceship. Right, send me the link. Right. Send, me the, send me the link. Send me the link. All right. All right. Um, so R&B gospel songs. Oh my gosh! I so with for that I'm gonna I'm gonna go more gospel. Okay, because okay. <clears throat> these are songs that like shape my life. So I mean, like, oh my god, like the whinings, millions by the whinings. You know, like I still listen to that now. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go millions. with I'm gonna go with like there's so many commission songs, but like a commission running back to you. Mm, okay, I know that one. Was was that one. very affected me. <laughs> um I've, I've been riding the commission for like yeah. the last few weeks. Just yeah. like tapping and back tapping am. back in. Tapping back into my Mitchell Jones. Tapping back in. Yes. Just really tapping yes. back into my I am here and yeah. hold me and those tones just, are what shaped us. <sighs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll go there. Then I'm gonna go. Uh, where are we at? Number three. Mm. I mean, like, um, let me go with like Prince, beautiful ones. Mm-hmm. 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 And then um, number four. Like, oh my gosh, how do you number four would have to be Jodeci, uh maybe Love You for Life. You know Amazing, what I'm saying? Right? Um number five. Hmm. I'm gonna go listen to that right. Let me see. Number five. I would have to say I would go back to like maybe Stevie had a song called, um, oh my gosh, what was the name of that song? <clears throat> Not Saturn, but um, oh, I can't think of the name of it. I just, I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. Stevie Wonder. Uh, I'm drawing a blank and I used to sing it all the time. I'll circle back to it. Okay. <clears throat> It'll come back to me. But that'll that be five? number five. That'd be number five. These are songs that like I'll still go listen to, like mm. you know what I mean for me. So my top five isn't necessarily the most popular song. It's your top five. Yeah. It's your top five. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, oh, I can't believe I can't remember. It'll come in the middle of your Voltron. Yeah. Here we it's go. Come. Voltron time. Yeah, yeah. I already know my Voltron. Oh, okay. 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 All right. All right. Now, 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 now. So with Voltron, because I watched on other episodes, it would you how many is Four. it? You're taking four artists to build one? Build one. Yeah. See, okay, my Voltron is a little different. I would do a Voltron. I would do a Voltron with Jodeci minus Dalvin with Young Tank. It's fucked up. You just take Dalvin out like that. Because I, I, I always wonder what Jodeci would sound like with three singers hmm. i know what they sounded like with two and i always looked at boys and men like they had more singers mm-hmm. more yes. like lead singers mm-hmm. yeah, so w- w- that whole boys the men Jod- jodeci thing yeah. was always like 
dang, and De- Dalvin, uh, Devontae was, you know, the cold producer yeah. or whatever. And Al- Dalvin was, you know, brought what he brought to the table as well. But like, I'm like, like knowing like, like, you know, how you sang and I wonder like, just like three, like dark skinned fucking singing ass, like church ass niggas. Like, I want to hear that shit. Like what? Cause I know you could get off with that. On Devontae production? Sheesh. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. That would be like Diary of a Mad Band Jodeci too. Let me be clear. Diary of a Mad Band Jodeci. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, Young Tank. That, that, that's what my dream that's where I would do I don't really care about nobody else I'll be like <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what that group sound like yeah yeah. Where if a third nigga could yeah. come in and get Shit. a lead on too is actually a group yeah too yeah. I love it though because it's, it's, it's all those things though it's it's the voice it's the styling and you produce it's, yeah. and you play yeah, too it's the passion so two like Devontae, to Devontae like what, is, what does that look like like it's crazy this, like if Devontae's on guitar and you're on keys, it's like, what the fuck is happening? And you're singing and these niggas singing and then like you got the one verse segment and then you come in on the, I don't know. Like, I just think that shit would have been super raw. Wow. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Is that, is that a reach? No, no, that's no. not a reach. That's it's, like, no, so that's, like, that's nuts. That's signable right there. That's signable. <laughs> <laughs> And you write, like, I just wonder if Devontae had, I would just wonder. Oh, 90s? In the 90s? I, mm. Sometimes I wish. If I was in the 90s? Yeah. yeah. If I could have came out early 90s, what I know now. The funny shit is motherfuckers yeah. be thinking you. They thinking, yeah, I think yeah. I came out in the 90s. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because your first album Maybe, was 2001, that's right? Probably why my 2000. Mind, that's probably why my mind goes there, too, because it seems like a perfect it seems like, oh, like that 90s. Fit, you know what I'm saying? I'm, oh, I'm 90s. I'm everything. I'm guess yeah. pencil pocket jeans, party shirt, <laughs> 90s. Nigga. Classic not Reebok. Not in, not in Leather not in vest, no shirt. No, I'm just saying, yeah. that's you're what I wore in high school. In Jodeci, if I'm in Jodeci, bro. then the money's different. I can afford leather. <laughs> I couldn't afford leather. The church wasn't paying Car me heart. that much. Carhartt. <laughs> Construction boots. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying. No, I get it. I right. get it. Absolutely. Oh shit. That's funny. <laughs> we got a man with a lot of stories, man. <laughs> a lot of, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I ain't saying no names. Hey. I ain't saying no names. Hey. I ain't saying no names. Hey. I ain't saying no names. Who you was? Who you with? <laughs> Don't say shit. Saying no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this segment, mm-hmm. this part of the show, is called "I Ain't Saying No Names." Right. Will you tell us a story? Ooh. Funny or fucked up, mm. Ooh. or funny and fucked up. Mm-hmm. Dang, I got a good one. In the travels mm-hmm. of Ryan Toby. I got a good one. Okay, okay. You ready? Are you ready? Hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I got... No, let me see. I'm going to go with... You you ready because he got to announce you. Okay, okay, okay. You got to be announced, brother. Okay, okay, okay. You got to announce you. (laughs) Okay, I'm ready. Okay. (laughs) It's my camera right here. Mm -hmm. Right now, Mm -hmm. we about to get into some real double diamond shit, Double diamond shit. You got Ryan Toby. Mm-hmm. Oh, happy motherfucking day. I know nobody's ever said it that way. I don't think oh, I'm, happy I don't motherfucking know day. To. <laughs> Toby. Here, right now. And he ain't about to say no names. Yeah, no, I ain't gonna say no names. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna say no names, but um <laughs> it was a writing session. This is early. This is early in my writing career. Um so this artist came down to a touch of jazz to work with me, Dre and Vidal. And this artist, he was he was very well known. Um and uh he 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 came down and, and this is in two no ninety 
this had to be maybe 99 at the latest, probably before that, 97 maybe, mm. maybe 98, 97. All I know is that the 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 uh, Lexus Land Cruiser was the hottest yeah. car on yeah. the street. Mm. Yeah. The Lexus Land mm. <clears throat> was the hottest car on the street. Mm -hmm. And um, he had the newest one, whatever version of it that was, he had the newest one, it was white, gold trim, uh, uh, peanut butter guts, fire, mm. so fire. Hottest car on the street. He come down, he iced out. We're just like, you know what I'm saying? This that this that got this that bull, as we say in yeah, Philly, yeah, this bull. that bull. Yeah. And um it was great. We vibing, we chilling, we 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 writing. And then uh and then it's like, yo man, let's let's get out the studio, you know what I'm saying? Let's let's go get a drink, let's go, you know what I mean, touch the town a little bit. So when we, we dip out, we all jump in the truck. And we all, we go to some little spot. We go to some little spot, whatever. Whoop -de -woo, we in the spot. We chilling. Da -da 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 -da. It's a vibe. All right, cool. We just wanted to get out the studio for a second. Now we about to head back. We done had a couple drinks, whatever. Da -da -da. We a little, you know, we a little rowdy. We walking out. We about to leave. I'm like, hey, yo, mm, man, let me whip this shit, man. The fuck, man? You got this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, nigga. Throw me the keys. All good. We all jump in the whip. Mm -hmm. Damn, what this got V8 in it? What this is? <laughs> <laughs> Mobbing, right? <laughs> so we mashing through the city. So I do a move where, you know, it was it was it was a red light and it was a car, you know, two cars in in front. So I, you know, you pull up just in time for when it turned green and dip around the car oh, yeah, that was yeah. in front of you. But you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, no. That that it's right it's turn. It's illegal. It's illegal. That right pass on the right side. I do it. Whoop 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 whoop. Police. Oh shit. Police. Damn. As I'm pulling over, the police in the back. Oh, and it was me and Vidal in the front, <laughs> and Dre and old boy <laughs> in the back. <laughs> Oh boy, go as I'm pulling over. Hey, yo, fam, my name Daryl. If they ask, like Daryl Brown or some shit. We're like, no, like, you're wait. not. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm looking in the rear view, like, what'd you say? Yeah, bro, my name Daryl. And he pulled like a turn to the side, like, I ain't in this type thing. And I ain't really care. It was so fast, and yeah. boom, they boop, boop. Cop came up, thing, came to the window. I'm like, wait. Wait, what did he just say? Nah, license registration. I don't know where anything is, cause you know what I mean? And right. homie got straight. This is a known, <laughs> known. <laughs> like <laughs> Daryl Brown. Got, he got straight silent. Daryl Brown. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm me and Vidal trying to find, find documents. where this shit is, yeah. We don't know where nothing's at. We hitting windshield wipers and hazard lights and things. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Clearly, this ain't our car. This right? looks bad. Trying to find it, trying to find it, glove compartment, whatever. So then Daryl is like, it's in the, it's in the, you know, in the thing under the thing, whatever. So I'm like, like, what the, you know what I'm saying? So go in, we get this little paperwork. Give it to the give it to the to the cop. He go back, sit right here. He go back, run everything. Car is hot as fish grease. <laughs> <laughs> the tags are from one state. Oh, man. The VIN number is from another oh, state. Shit. The name is like of a dead person. Like it's like. Oh, this is. Oh. And he's oh. not. This ain't a rapper. This is a singer, a well-known <laughs> singer. And so at the time. <laughs> So I'm like, yo, but but we, you know, so when the cop came back, step out the car, step out the car for what? He tell you, you this car is hot, man. License plate from one state, the VIN number from another state, this from another state. I'm like, oh man, nah, come on, man. Like, oh no, nah, we got this. This this ain't even my car, bro. Well, whose car is it? And, and so there, I'm like, I'm waiting for. Daryl to like say something. So now everybody get we all giving out fake names. Oh, they well, my name is Tony and my name is, you know, Chico and you know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah. So the cop like, all right, that's well, get out the car. 
So I'm like, all right. So I open the door. And I mean, I, I get out the car. That, nigga still ain't say nothing. So now they trying to argue. No, officer, it ain't, you know, it's our, uh, our friend car. We work at the studio around the corner. He, he's back there at the studio. He was like, well, you better go get him because uh, if not, he's going to jail. This nigga still ain't say nothing. So Dream Dow trying to, nah, we, we work at the studio. Jazzy Jeff, he trying to throw anything out there to get yeah, some love. That's the name Jazzy Jeff. We, we, ain't, getting, we ain't getting no love. Bro. Thank you, Jeff. We ain't getting no love. So everybody get out the car. And then they trying to like kind of walk with me and negotiate with the cop. And the cop, and then he, you know, other units done yeah. pulled up real fast. And uh, they get it, you know, now they back up, get on the sidewalk. You know what I'm saying? You come over here, you want to go to jail too. Da, 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 da. So it turned into this whole fucking thing. Oh, so he made them all walk on. Get get the fuck out. I'm telling you right now, take all y'all asses to jail. You better get the fuck on. Da, 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 da. Oh boy, still ain't say nothing. So I'm trying to hold it down as long as I can. Like, I'm like, I don't know. He, they put me in the cuffs and everything, bro. Put me in the back of the squad car. And I turn around and like, Deep, and he's like in front of them, walking in front of them. I'm out. I'm like, nah, dog. Hey, yo, officer. You. Yeah. Hey, yo. <laughs> you. Yeah. You. Come here, man. Uh-uh. No. See him right there? The one right there. Let me with tell the, you what's With the blue coat, with the jewelry on. <laughs> this is his car. Fuck that. I'm not going to jail for this nigga. No, nigga. No, nigga. So... We get to talking this, that, and the third, and then the cop was like, "Well, whose car is it?" I'm, I, man, I, man, listen, I sang like a motherfucker. <laughs> listen, I sang listen. Devil Diamond song. Bro, I don't know <laughs> you. This is my first day meeting you, man. You feel me? You feel and you me. gonna be straight silent, like you and you walking off first? What? Like even you know Jam and Dow, they trying to linger and right. they they coming up with most of the story. Like yo, we it was our brother car. He had the studio. We the studios right around the corner. We could go, you know, officer. They trying to plead a little case for me. Cop trying to tell them to move on. Homeboy is already walking yeah. down the street. Yeah. Nah, man. Nah, no. Nah. That's him. That's him. <laughs> That's him. His alias is Daryl Jones, but you he goes by. Jones. He signed to. <laughs> he signed to exactly his new song. Exactly, which I, could, probably I, I, heard. I couldn't do it. I, I, I mean, like I, I couldn't. No, 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 no. So how so, does this turn out? So I think what happened. I was in the car. They never. They didn't take me down to the to the precinct. He just told me what the situation was with the car, and then he was like, "Well, I was like, well, it ain't my car, and you know, like my name wasn't on nothing." And then he was just like, um. I don't know if I gave him my, I don't know what happened, but he was just like, well, I'm taking the car. I'm impounding the car. That was how it all somehow played out. Or if they told, they was finally able to talk to the cop and he said, well, tell your brother he can come get it from the, from the, from the uh, station, something like that. Mm -hmm. Tell him he can come get it from the impound. So they was like, all right, we're going to go get him. Can you, can you let my friend out? He was like, hold on, hold on a second. They just like made me sit in the car for a minute. Thought they was about to take me downtown, but they ended up letting me get out the car. I walked back to the studio. Get back to the studio. This nigga's already at the studio. Like, sitting in the studio. Quick to record. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, I ain't saying no names. Did y'all do the record? We had already did the record. Matter of fact, <laughs> that's why we went out. Because it was kind of like we finished. Yeah, the record was done. It was fire. It was just kind of like, all right, let's go out. You know, we'll celebrate type thing. Left so the record was already done. All the way out there. And then he the hit me with some, car. oh, man, you know, oh, I bought it from um, my homie and such and such. And, man, the paperwork, man. I'm he, Like, he hit me with, oh, nigga, you knew you was riding around. Because this was back when niggas was copping them, you know, oh, you no, get like the 600. Up. For, you can no, get a Ben no, no. 600 I've, for like 12,000. Niggas was buying, you know, they're buying, buying those them cars, cars off the boat. You I haven't. Can get, I'm, like, not, I'm not buying yeah. hey, those like, no. I have not had any of those cars. I was like, so who, so who I make the payment to? Right. Make it to him. Right. So I'm Daryl Brown. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> if I get stopped, what do I say? 
got it. Okay. Right. I can stop. Right. What do I right. say? Got it. Got it. Got it. I've had a few of those. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. yeah. This was this was during that. I remember during that time, like, cause that was like the that was like the thing. That was the thing. That was the thing. Niggas, like, was niggas switching was, VIN numbers niggas and switching plates, buying shit. them off the boat. Yeah. Just drive slow, homie. Yeah, yeah. Just drive. What they used to tell me. <laughs> yeah. Drive slow. Which which I'm like, bro, why you ain't just say that when we like, you know what I mean? Like, yo, nah, cause that that would have fucked up the flaws. Yeah, fucked up the flaws to be like. You think it's 120, yeah. but it's 17? And this, 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 17. Was, this, was, this was early. Like I said, this was very early in my working with artists. Right. So I was green to right. you didn't know, artists. You didn't so know as far as I knew, cars. I ain't that. no niggas was stealing cars or wearing fake jewelry or anything like that. I'm, I'm super young. It's 1997. I might have been, right. I don't know, 19 yeah. years old, 20 years old yeah. or whatever that was. So it's like- It ain't always super sweet. I'm thinking like, wow, that you're you're so and so. You used to sing with so and so, and you did so and so. High car, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Damn, and you got the newest damn nigga. You getting it? Like, I'm excited. This might have been my second artist session. First artist session was with Darius Rucker, mm -hmm. and uh, and and that was funny because he had a deal with uh Budweiser from Hootie and the Blowfish. Of course like, he, he did. So Budweiser trucks would pull up to the studio dropping drop all off. cases of Bud. <laughs> wow! Fuck it. Fuck it, I'm with it. <laughs> you guys party? Uh, okay, so you guys party? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So like that's artist number one, and then like artist number two is this guy, right? Is, so I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you guys party? <laughs> that was my that was my white nigga boy. Right. Got, a, got a keg of Bud. That yeah, keg of Bud, exactly. Want, you guys want to party? Bud lights. You guys want to get wild? <laughs> you want to get, get weird? <laughs> <laughs> I got, a, I, got a, I got a keg of Bud Light. It'll take us anywhere we want to go. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, that's um, great, my bro. brother, listen, man. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we, we've we been family for quite some time. So, you know, for you us to sit here. You wrote what would Jesus do? Yeah, <laughs> Which turned out to be what would Joe to see do? And I'm, listen, I'm, I, I be trying to tell people it's not what would Jesus do. W -W -J -D. It's what would Joe to see do? Right. Absolutely. Jodeci, yeah, which to us is kind of Jesus like. That's yeah, Jesus. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And you made me record my vocals over. I never record my vocals over. And Ryan said, I just think <laughs> if you just get back in my pocket. <laughs> okay. He realized he was double hey, diamond. I, uh, he's double diamond. Hey. I, I, when he said go re record, <laughs> you gotta go re record. Yeah. I got, y'all should add a segment to the show called. Funny tank moments. Everyone has a funny tank moment. You should, for sure. you, you should add funny tank moments and make your guests tell some good funny tank moments that they had in their life. If they, yeah. If, if they, they know you, yeah. they have I got, one. I got, I got a good three. I'm sure. I was debating on whether to use that one or not, but oh, I said, shit. because it's three, I was like, it's going to be too long. So I said, I'll just tell the one about the other guy. Oh, no, that's My so tank nice. moments are good, though. They're funny, though. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking back in my day. I would have a beverage or two. <laughs> I would have a beverage or two. That's Thank you, funny. brother, for coming man, by, man. Thank you, sure, you know. Man. Thank you, fellas. Um, shit, telling me a bunch of shit I ain't know. Hmm? Telling me a bunch of shit I ain't know. Oh, you said I am telling you something? No, I mean, you mean just going through the progressions oh, of your oh. story and yeah, yeah, yeah. all of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, you know, I, I like... I like what this is because although it is a thing that, you know, we end up, you know, uploading or whatever that is mm -hmm. um, from the business of it, like it really gives us an opportunity to dive, have those deep dive conversations with our guys, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you know, yeah, or our yeah. girls and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, find something like this, out, yeah. what? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's cool. It's cool too that the, the fans, the people that watch that maybe aren't in the industry, they get to see that industry people artists whatever are still human they just have, they have human stories yeah. and human situations because yeah. i think a lot of times fans that you know you don't think niggas is human no. they're like what At you all. did what oh he did what? Oh, you did. You know yeah. what i mean yeah. or even you know like i'm the dude i'm talking about he's just a nigga just doing with you know what i'm saying yeah. with some type those type of guys do yeah. so it's like it's not that we you got to hold these people in this Almost like uh, unrealistic, Deity like de position. yeah, deifying, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's a platform like this allows people to see that. 
Like I'm just I tell people all the time, yeah, my man. repossession is the same as your repossession. <laughs> Can people, we confirm? Them people that call you when they money, they, 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 they calling call me too. too. Can, we, can we confirm that Tank ain't Daryl Brown? Huh? Can we at least confirm that that Tank is not Daryl Brown? Oh, no, 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 no. He would have, he would have been broken. You know what? That's not, why I didn't want to tell my really other story. I'm like, he gonna give he's it away. Really he gonna like apologize. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm not Daryl Brown. He's not Daryl Brown. He's not Daryl Brown. Listen, man, I don't I don't even know what else to say about you, man, outside of, you know, you're probably the only guy I know that's a double diamond. Oh, man. You Thank know what you, I'm saying? Man. Congratulations, brother. Thank we you, We respect man. your craft. Ditto, man. Um, we respect you and love you as a human being. Yes, sir. Likewise, and, man. you know, we all, we had our talk at Cheesecake, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, you know, this retiring shit is bullshit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I need a couple more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna yeah, need I like to, that. You know, put the double diamond pin yeah. and, and production hat back on. Absolutely. To, yeah, to, yeah. You know, Absolutely. I'm out of retirement. I'm going to make, I made my first debut album. Yeah. So it's yeah. yeah. I yeah. see that, man. I, yeah, man, listen, man, man. When I seen you on stage, man, you, you know what I mean? You know, you already know my favorite song still is to this day. You know, you know that, right? I, that was... He played me a song 15 years ago, <laughs> yeah. and I'm still talking about it to this day. Like, you feel me? So it's like, when I seen you on, I said, wait a minute. Yeah. Knowing true. when you went, you know, you went to the other side, you went to the corporate side, yeah. management side, and all these different chair. things. I wanted to swivel. You wanted to swivel chair. Yeah. But then your ass is back on the on the yeah. stage with the motherfucker. Was that fuchsia? What color yeah. was that? I suit? mean, listen, it was. Huh? No, no, his, his was fuchsia. His was his fuchsia. His was fuchsia. I had okay. the cream on. Okay. I had okay. the cream okay. on. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah I said, yeah. man, that, and, and to know y'all brotherhood and to know the journey, and then now, like, nigga, we just gonna go just snap and have fun. Yeah. I was about, bro. That's, That's all it's it. about. That's it. That's good it. Time, man. Yeah, good that time, gave me man. that. That that really blessed my heart. Now man. we really thank you for coming, bro. Like people don't know. Mm. Yeah, I ran up on this man in the mall. Yeah, <laughs> this, is my, this is my real friend in real life. Yeah. I threatened him in the mall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was really. Aggressive. I was really. I was really. And I've never. Was, this is my was, guy. I've never been aggressive, but I was very aggressive about that. Gotcha. Gotcha. And this was before <laughs> the streets start asking. Yeah, because we talked about this a long, long time, time ago. Yeah. Him coming on yeah, to the show, but yeah, he's a very yeah. busy man. I mean, he's obviously he's double diamond, so he's living his best life. <laughs> um, so it, took, it took a minute to get him here. Right. He's here now. I'm here now. Shout he's out to Ruben. Shout out to Roop. You know what I mean? Come on, the scheduling is right, man. Yes, it is. You didn't put you didn't put you didn't put it out there now. Now they're gonna be looking up Ruben. Okay? <laughs> Who's so Ruben? If you wanna come on, Ruben gets me on the hit. show. Listen, <laughs> everybody. Listen, these these two guys are just the face. They yeah, just the just face. Yeah. Don't be fooled. There is there are guys. There's brains to the yeah, operation. There's brains to the operation. <laughs> the brains name Jacob and Ruben. is Ruben. Jacob hey, and Ruben. Hey, real quick, let me bring this back. Yeah. Poochie's daddy name was Ruben. Man, see? Wow. See? I just had to. Of course, Poochie's daddy name yeah. was Ruben. Yeah. <laughs> of course. What yeah. else would his name be? Ruben. Ruben. Yeah, Ruben. Hey, hey, Ruben. Hey, 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 hey. Do you want to come on my show? Ruben. Do you want to come on Art of You want to come on the yard? Uh, you want to wanna dance with me, baby? What you want to do? You want to talk to huh? Frank? You want to talk to him? You want to talk to him? Hey, to him? You want to talk to Ye? To them? Ye! You want to talk to Ye? Valentine? Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the RB Money Podcast, the authority yes, of, on all things, all things R&B and one of the greatest R&B talents of all time. This is our brother, man. And that's the Thank only you, way I'm going to say it. Double diamond in the building. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, yeah. R&B money.